Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. I want to start right away Hello, with that everybody. comment because it's like we cannot let your mom start a podcast. She'll be <clears> she'll be <throat> she'll blow she'll up. blow past us so quickly mm-hmm. it'll embarrass us. Yeah, I know. She is such a character, dude. I know. Don't even <laughs> let her see the equipment. You look amazing right now. No, she, if your mom cut. started a podcast on the equipment that you're using. Yeah. She'd blow up. She'd blow up, dude. This is this looks so nice. I I literally look like I'm a telling an assault story. You look so good. I'm floored. I feel like I need to interview you on a really serious subject. Okay, to about something happened. Wait, that happened. Let's 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 intro the podcast first. Okay. Hit it, Frank. Welcome to another episode of Prime Motherfucking Topics. I'm your host, Kim Congdon. Here's my co-host. Alex Scarlato. Kimmy, you're making me look uggo today. I, you know what I think? I don't like it because it's showing too much detail. You think so? Yeah, I think it's a lot. No, I, I think you look good in HD. You should, you should always be in HD to show this fucking world that you don't need some fucking shit to cover up any flaws. There you you're are. Right. This is me in 4K looking Didn't amazing. even brush my hair today. Wow, I brushed my hair today and desperately <laughs> wished I brought a hairbrush so that I could brush it again before the show and I didn't. The back of my hair looks like a nightmare probably. Um, but yeah, what's up, Alex? Nothing much, Kimmy. Um, I slept at my parents' house last night. It was my first day out after being sick with not COVID apparently for like eight days and missing Christmas. Um, and yeah, we, I had dinner with my parents and we like, we exchanged our gifts and everything. And Harrington came over and before bed, I read Harrington out loud. I read him the Polar Express and we both started crying on the same page. No, you guys are disgustingly meant to be. I wish you guys could see how, um, how Alex is gonna hate me saying this. How- passionate I her and Harrington are for each other but it's funny because I keep seeing like comments online of people being like like looks like Alex gave up and started dating Harrington like all these mean comments and I'm like if they only knew how Harrington treats me it's you couldn't even imagine I don't Alex know what to say Alex hasn't had to lift her finger for like five years I don't know what to say truly and I've only been dating him for like five months yeah he's always been I'm so sorry. nice to you He's been so nice to me. Except um, for like literally... when you guys first met and he was mean and then I and then I didn't like him. Remember I didn't used to like Harrington because he was mean to you. And specifically something that you said to him shifted his behavior toward me and it stayed like that I forever. Love Kim. It was uh, when we Kim were in Vegas taking together credit for, for Harrington's uh, transformation fight a few years personality. Ago. Mm-hmm. He was like hilarious. Harrington was being a dick Might even be because true, he was like still funny. constantly hitting on me around mm-hmm. that time. I was like, dude, you gotta stop. Right. I just want to be friends. He like took it badly and he was just fucking mean and like a total nightmare. And something that Kim said to him, just like it clicked. And he was like, if I ever want this to be a thing, I should probably be nice. That's what I said. I said, you're not going to make her like you by being mean to her. Yeah. What are you doing? You said it in front of 10 of our friends in in the middle of a Vegas casino, just like embarrass him. Be nice. Thank you, Kimmy. <laughs> like, truly, who what do you want, want me to say? Friend? Who would not want Kim as a friend? She literally will do that in front of people. It's amazing. There's no better okay. feeling when you can't when you feel like you can't defend yourself and somebody just fully says everything that you couldn't even think to say. Well, the thing is, you got to say it sometimes. People need to be called out. There's certain people that just need to be called out. And now I have a list. <laughs> Here we go. Number one. <laughs> Just, Just repeating last week's episode. Yeah. Uh, last week's episode, really, the comments. I someone sent me a Reddit link where people are um, wondering who we're talking about, and everyone thinks it's Sherrod. And I'm here no right way. now to say it is not Sherrod. Every week we will cross one name off the list. <laughs> You just keep listening to the podcast. 
<laughs> I will not confirm Sherrod. with yeah, with one hundred percent honesty from my heart. No way, it's Sherrod. No fucking way, it's Sherrod. Sherrod's good vibes, dude. Sherrod's great vibes. I've never had, not had a great time hanging out with Sherrod. Yeah, same. <laughs> the chat said Sherrod rules. <laughs> um, oh man, I'm so stoned. I feel like this camera really <laughs> captures it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice that you said it, but now I'm, I'm there with you and seeing it. <laughs> um, but listen, we can't we can't focus on that kind of shit. It's like, what kind of podcast will this be? Um, yeah, I really I don't know if you saw my email before the show, but and I'm sure you came across this girl's TikTok account. But I want to discuss um, the woman and G Mike. If you could take us to the video that's in the article first, because that's like. That's like the main video that she like kind of blew up for. Have you seen the woman who is dancing in front of her sick baby after she gave birth to it at the hospital? <laughs> no. No? Literally, we mean you just wait on this podcast. You have to wait a second. <laughs> Not everything comes quickly. Oh. She is not. She is not. She is not. <laughs> she is not. So people have like come after her for that because like everybody's <laughs> like, obviously people are like, how tasteless! Like read the fucking room, bitch. This is your child. Literally and read the, the room. Your child's in the room, sick. Kim, the way that this woman has doubled fucking down. Oh, she dances she harder. <laughs> Doubling down, dancing harder, talking about the sick baby in the comments and dancing harder. And it's like another, it's like, aside from the sick baby, aside from the fact that the baby is sick, this woman just gave birth and I haven't seen somebody hit moves as fucking hard as she is. It's like her insides, her, I just like imagine. a break. I imagine like um, her insides being like if you drank half of a Yoohoo from like one of those like cardboard uh, containers and then just shook it around. <laughs> you know what had me feeling like that? I saw a TikTok of an 18 year old girl that had a baby and then got pregnant eight days after she had the baby. That's too much. That's and I'm like, much. imagine that baby growing in that old stretched out womb <laughs> that just was freshly lived in. It's like moving into an apartment that hasn't been cleaned out yet from the last landlord. Yeah, that's gross. It's like other people's hairs in the sink and shit. I'm a, I'm not even about like I I mean I don't have kids yet, but it's like I don't think I would even have um, sex for like a few months after I gave literal birth. Listen, I'm I'm fucking it. I house. need a month. I need a month <laughs> and a half or two sex for like. I don't think I would even have um, sex like. I don't think I would even have um, sex um, for like sex. a few months after I gave. Listen to how she says that. That's so childish. I love it. It's very adorable. She she has trouble saying sex. Have um, sex for like. A lot of I people have this I problem. Even like have this pause and then um, have, sex. Um, sex like. I don't think I would even have um, sex for like a. I don't Look at think the disgust face she makes. Have um, sex for like a few <laughs> months after I gave literal birth. Alex is adorable, folks. Listen, I'm, I'm fucking it. I need a month. I need a month and a half or two. Congrats no, yeah, to I need a month her and a half. I need some time before they finally like, found each other. It's probably so traumatic. That was inevitable. <laughs> I could have done the whole podcast while watching this woman's TikTok. I swear to God. <laughs> it was just in the background. I she was just dancing with her sick baby. She's holding the sick baby in her arms and is shaking her, like twerking her ass. This woman is out of control. She also is like using if angles you're not familiar and like with really this, spending time. Uh, Let me tell you, I've been trying to do TikToks and the lately, kind of and it's been going through a ring light in the delivery you should room. Be. Yeah, it's the best, she brought a um, ring light. She also like soap opera. This going. takes time and editing and like. If you cuts like that sort of thing. And angles. Multiple takes. Yes. Yeah. So she's doing transitions. Like, imagine She's... the nurse walking in while you're dancing in front of your dying baby. That's hilarious. Have you seen... Uh, I'm out Have of soda, Have you seen folks. Long Neck? The... 
had to make a pilgrimage long, to refrigerate the guy and get some more. Himself long neck? No. Oh, uh, G Mike, if you can find it, long neck delivery room dance TikTok. And if that video pops up, this guy is. I can't believe someone. He, a human let him come inside it. Okay, so he's the father in this delivery room circumstance. Yes, and he's like so skinny. I guess he used to go viral like a lot. I'm back. And he's so skinny. I know I'm gonna. I already know I'm gonna hate this video because I just sort of feel like, like it's like it should be an honor for a man to be invited into a delivery room to begin with. I don't care if you're this, the fucking sperm donor or not. Yeah, and if you're sperm dancing, donor, she says. <laughs> you cannot dance in my delivery room. I will kill you. No, but that is him. That's not the video, but that is him. Not father, sperm donor. Hold on, is that his girl? No, no, I think his girl's pretty. I guess no. probably the that majority of sperm donors aren't actual fathers in any real sense. That girl, his girl makes that girl look like she was found She's at the bottom wrong. of the ocean. Do you think people are dating people like way fucking different than them just for clout on TikTok? Because we were yes. talking about that. We were talking about that just me and you FaceTiming this week about that old saggy woman who's dating the hot young black dude. Yes. You think it's the one, it can't the be one real. where all the comments were killing us, all the TikTok comments? Me and Alex just called each other and then we read TikTok comments about this. There's this old leathery face lady. TikTok like she looked is like ruining I swear to God, she looked like and early 30s cracks women. in the concrete. Like she Dude, looked like probably others too, I could, I but that's really the only group I'm TikTok familiar and with. I'm sending it to G Mike. I can't this even. This do, folks. I can't even not bring this up. I don't know what to say. This TikTok entertained me for two hours because the roast <laughs> jokes were too fucking good. The jokes were so good. It's like that's a, reading the comments on TikTok is obviously the best part. I think it's part of the culture. It truly is. It's I could spend an I spent an hour and a half in in this comment section, by the way. Why is my copy paste not working? When we say wait a minute on the podcast, we literally mean wait a minute. Oh, yeah, think... yeah, you are going to have to edit this out. <laughs> Nothing is ever edited out of the podcast. <laughs> What's going on? It seems like unless <laughs> it's really too, bad. We both got too high to continue the conversation. <laughs> at least on the ones I'm a fan of. SMG Mike something. I don't and like I truly do need him produce. to edit out at least 10 or 15 seconds of that <laughs> dead air because it's like we forgot we were doing a podcast. For a I second. did. I think I looked at my phone. Did I look at my phone? Because another thing you have to remember is that like Kim and I talk to each other like literally like three times a day. <laughs> like. <laughs> We like FaceTime each other three times a day. And sometimes we do that thing where you just literally forget that the other person's there for like <laughs> 20 minutes and then just come back to the conversation. There have been a few times where I'm just living my life and Alex talks and I jump. <laughs> like, oh, <shit. laughs> Bitch, I forgot you were here. <laughs> I could have been, who knows? I did that with G Mike last podcast. Sometimes you just forget you're on camera. It's scary. I have literally I've done that before. You... I've been there. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I've literally seen you naked in the last week because you kind of forgot that we were on FaceTime. <laughs> yeah, I gave you a mouthful of titty. Yeah, you gave me a good mouthful of titty, sister. You're welcome. Thank you. Um... <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to thank you. It's okay. Yeah, but it's like we we can't be getting the levels of high that we forget that we're doing the podcast and we go into like just regular FaceTime mode. It's a problem. For sure. Here she lady, is. Though. Oh my God. Okay. You think you think I'm scared? I ran 3,300 miles away. First of all, before we start the video, with my seven children for an abusive relationship to be free. Yeah, it's this a really woman... important note that that is what this video is about, okay? It's How'd you get up to seven kids in an abusive relationship? You're the problem you there, I'm too. You're I ran both the problem. I'm sure it was abusive. Seven we have to kid number three. From an three. abusive relationship to be free. Think, you know, the guy's a and piece of shit. Curious. And, and I will add to this. She has, has to be Sue's cousin. Yes. Okay. She has like, she has Sue energy. It, it's, she has Sue energy. She, if you watched our episode called Sickly Sue, if you haven't, you need to go fucking watch it right away. Alex and I did a tab of acid and decided to go garage sailing in Florida. <laughs> and we ran into this lady at a trailer park named Sue. We made who, a friend. We made, <laughs> she gave Alex 
all of Alex's wardrobe, basically. She gave me all of her belongings. She said, you are the same size I used to be. Because <laughs> she was sickly. <laughs> Yeah, no, she hasn't. By the way, she did not gain weight. She lost so much weight from what I am now that she can't fit in the clothes anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, I leave everything to you. And, and it all was like Alex's style because like this lady was wearing like hippie stuff on ironically. Like it just had, she had, she had had it literally, it's literal vintage. It's that Alex hippie got. shit from the seventies. It's fucking yes. sick. Yes, this it's woman, real vintage. Let's not pretend that Alex is wearing this hippie woman stuff, is like, ironically. If Susan, she like, might think she is, really got but that's all real. Bad drugs for a no, that's long fine. time. This is Nothing like if Sue just be stayed honest. sick but never died. This is, this is sickly Susan in 20 years. Yeah. While she keeps yeah. smoking cigarettes, that was another thing about her. Go back and listen to the episode, but like she <laughs> made it a point to be like, Yep, doctor, my ex-husband, everybody says I need to stop smoking cigarettes, but I ain't gonna because cancer's cancer and cigarettes are cigarettes. <laughs> like, she did say that. And as we were just finishing up loading all of her shit, like literally her entire house into our car, we were all in acid, so we thought we were hitting a lick. And we <laughs> we have we put all this stuff in as we like almost as we loaded the last thing in, she's like, Yeah, I done cough blood on everything. <laughs> I was like, what? fucking wild dude so, we double washed it all yeah it was um yeah so anyway susan's cousin is here she's been through <laughs> some shit this she is the seven talk yeah never said I'm never scared. With okay. Zero CGI whatsoever. She could literally play something in like um a in like a scary film. movie like The Grudge. Yeah, like like she could be like an old woman who's demonically possessed. If I was a casting agent, I was casting for a horror film, I'd call her up and say, "Let's what she's like in front of a camera." She can obviously say, TikTok. I'd say, "Honey, you're a star. <laughs> you're a star. A shriveled fucking dying star." So let's see what the comments are. Man, you have to log in to see the comments, but I literally have no. it right here. So I'm, I'm just gonna take you through them real quick. Okay. I mean, the the top comment is, did that happen fifteen thousand years ago? <laughs> <laughs> Seniors who started vaping as freshmen. <laughs> <laughs> That's not nice. I like what it else? when the comments are like typed out a little ghetto sometimes it just makes it funnier like this what one says use was running from dinosaurs too <laughs> <laughs> give me another give me another give me the top one damn she pre-ordered the bible <laughs> <laughs> was this before the american revolution started <laughs> somebody just goes i'm fighting for my spot in heaven every day <laughs> It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> the only person I trust with my history class homework. She's seen it all. <laughs> been running since the Byzantine Empire. Bro oh, helped man. write the Ten Commandments. She wrote on Noah's Ark. Fifteenth <laughs> century. Good history oh, poll. It's good. Goes, the disrespect y'all have. SMH. <laughs> <laughs> this woman is talking about being abused. I mean, and I felt bad and everything, but it's like, that's the thing about the internet. You cannot okay, yeah. put yourself out there. You just have to expect the that. Possibility Leave of me some, some mean comments, guys. Like, if this you have any internet. kind of self awareness, it's part of the culture. If I was this woman, I would not be posting, is what I'm saying. Tell me your least favorite part about my face. Posting, but it's also our right as Americans to make fun of her. Yeah. Is it my, or to at least my gain joy from other definitely some kind of predator of uh, yeah. facial hair here? Because I spent like an hour and a half in that comment section. You don't know what it is. Back to the video, it's going to be a theft. The comments, it back to something the violent. What's it going to be? Is good. Loop, but you know, sister. this is what you see. You are stuck in a, a cops or life PD or any kind of police show. One of the worst loops yeah. to get stuck in. No arrests. I don't know, man. No I promise you that she lives in Florida. I'm a good boy. I just promise you. I've been wanting to do one of those TikToks that's like. I know this one. Like a five-year-old you know monkey? That one? 
Yeah. If you don't understand what I'm saying, it's literally, that's just the audio. It does that. And then people put things at like, like your parents' fridge when you come home and it'll be like old dressings and like a bag of like nuts and like a weird, like keto snack. And it's like, it, they'll do each picture in each frame and go like, oh. <laughs> and it's like the loneliest, echoiest audio. It just yeah, it's sounds like- an unsettling, like, like childish kind of lonely audio to show off. It, things that could be better Let's where, put it, it, that where it emotionally brings me is it emotionally brings me to like if you were a child stuck in purgatory oh right isn't that if that's the feel that's of the brutal. audio so it goes, the feel oh. of the audio yeah it's like Wait. each thing it's like the desire for Shout the thing to, to be fun combined with the realization that it isn't and it's all all of that is encapsulated in each one of these little echoing sounds how how, how does it's actually work? amazing it's actually it's this is this is a podcast about science i don't know if you guys know that we're it's art folks actually talking about very smart things you've ever listened to joe rogan this is like the woman version of joe rogan <laughs> <laughs> We're looking up the science behind. Wait, ha! Ah. <laughs> that audio does definitely. If you, we were to put our brains under a brain scanner, I promise you that it would audio bring up traumatic dark memories. Does something to your brain where it's like, yep, I've been there. Just that time that I thought things were gonna be awesome, and then the day sucked. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. Yeah. I don't get it, but it's like a play date being canceled when you were looking forward to it all week as like a six year old. You know, which, like that. you know, which audio on TikTok fucks me up. The one that's like, um, it, it'll always talk about like things that are unfound in the ocean. And it's like this, like, yeah, yeah, that audio is. Oh, oh, that was fully demonic. The Game of Thrones one that goes, oh, 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 yes, and beggars Ooh, is no. fucked up. Yeah, if it, it gives you goosebumps just hearing it, it and always they use it to, to show you like fears, usually like fear of massive things. The person who posted it is one. so annoying, by the way, because the person that the person who that account is like, when I say when I say I have fear of large things, I don't mean these kinds of things. And then it shows you like an SUV. Yeah. <laughs> really okay. normal things that nobody's afraid of and then he flips it to like what the fear actually is and the co i keep the comment section phobia, believe, every right? time is like who would be afraid of those first things <laughs> the, the comment section is why tiktok is so successful the comment section is so funny dude we talked did we talk about the grandma's ass yes we Where well no like, we didn't we talked about it between the two of us not on the show i don't think ah oh, there is this where the this is, yeah, the dude who came home from 16 years in prison, and he, there's a series of him like meeting with each of his family members for the first time. Yeah, and it's and, supposed to be sweet. Yeah, but grandma's getting a little extra attention. <laughs> yeah, because she has this dress on, and her ass looks so. She's like old and kind of like, like fat. It's like a house dress on that like a black or Italian grandmother would be wearing at yes. any point. Yes. yes, or a Hispanic. Anybody or besides Hispanic. a white grandmother. Anybody who's not a white grandmother would wear these dresses. Yes. And she is walking in it, and her ass is like, almost like clapping in the cheeks of the dress <laughs> as she's so it's walking. Like, like the dress has like natural pleating to it, but like one of those pleats, like to the naked eye you wouldn't notice, but one of those pleats fits perfectly in her ass crack. And the and, and the way the fabric's designed perfectly curves her body. It, yeah, it was a beautiful dress. It. But when she's when she is as excited as she is to see her grandson for the first time in 16 she's years, hopping. she starts jumping up and down. And, and it her starts. <laughs> her booty be clapping. <laughs> I was like, damn, my phone started vibrating. There was not one person in the comments who didn't need to address it. I swear to God. Yeah, there. Every single person said, "Like, damn, people are clapping, and the movie didn't even stop yet." <laughs> like, and it's like, and it's talking about grandma. It's talking about. Uh, I saw another comment saying, "Every day I fight for my spot in heaven." <laughs> like. That's a big one. I also love the the TikToks that are will be people in love. 
and it'll be it'll show like the cutest most romantic tiktok video and then you go to the comments and someone says i hope my next blink is my last yeah <laughs> if someone's like, like time to take a bath with my toaster <laughs> yes. yeah. it's so funny so depressing oh it's really great the internet's unmatched truly i can't believe yeah i we've lived without and it's like and also, I need to also, like, do this PSA that I truly believe that, like, TikTok is fucking with my brain and, like, not making me have a shorter attention span and, like, unable to, like, sit down Instant and watch a full-length folks. movie. A but movie, I don't care. A movie feels like three and a half years when you're watching it. By the time we're in the second act of the movie, I'm like, this should be over. When we I know was, what the whole thing's about. We know what's going to happen in the third act, and we know how it's going to come around. So let's just cut the fat can we cut movies down i say every feature film should be 45 minutes ideal Dude, i get that when i was sick last week i spent like literally i was spending like four hours at a time on tiktok and then i'd be like i need to, i should stop doing this and transition to a movie and i was like go already dude <laughs> do the thing i can't be funny like <laughs> scare me <laughs> like, scare me be funny please I just want to feel something new every minute, please. Yeah, it takes a long... And then when someone puts on a movie, now when someone wants to watch a movie and they're like, it's kind of long. I'm like, no, because movies are long. So I'm not watching a long movie. Are you fucking insane? A three-hour film, like The Irishman. You couldn't pay me to watch The Irishman. I don't care how good it is, by the way. I watched it. You couldn't pay me to sit down and watch The Irishman. Me neither. Four hours? No. If I'm going to watch a three-hour movie, it has to have... Not a big mob movie, guy. It has, I don't really like, see the appeal. Always it has to have two like, and a half hours of me. <laughs> a minimum. It's so funny because I was going to say it has to have the hottest person ever in it. That's <laughs> literally what I was going to say. Because, like, I could literally... I could watch Titanic. I watched Titanic, like, three weeks ago. And me it too. And flew by because me we too. are... Everybody in it's so hot. I'm just, like, horny watching Titanic for three hours and it flies by. Yes, but the Irishman's like a dude walk. It's like one of the shots is like literally a full minute and a half of like a dude's walking stick in the dirt, and then and then it pans up for men. Yeah, (laughs) I know by the trailer when a movie is fully made for men and people and men are gonna be like, what a great film! (laughs) It was so deep. Like no, it wasn't. It was just the only place you. you are allowed to have your emotions, and you had three hours to feel emotional over dirt. I'm glad you felt something. <laughs> for me. I'm sorry. Good. Stop raping. <laughs> Please. We're trying. It's hard. Stop raping. Watch another movie. <laughs> Listen, some of us have gotten the message. Yeah, that um, the Irishman is not for me. I can't even think of another movie that I think of like that. But there's got to be so many. Where am I? Oh, like... Lord of the Rings. I I've told you that my my mom and I will still fight to this day if we bring up Lord of the Rings. Because when it came, whatever year the first Lord of the Rings movie came out, I must have been like nine years old, maybe. Mm-hmm. My parents, I'm, I think I was younger. What year did that movie come out? I must know. I was born in 93. I need can to I know guess? how old I can was. Can I guess? Because I like to see if I can remember. If Lord of the Rings must have came out, I feel like when I was a freshman in high school, which would have been... Nah. There were three the Rings came out in December 2001, and then each sequel was a year after. I was 11. 2001. Okay, so I was, I was 11. Nine, eight, eight or nine, depending on the time of year. Okay, so um, maybe almost my... Okay, so... Okay, okay, okay. So maybe, maybe in retrospect, I was too old for this behavior, but, like, my parents were like, we're going to see a movie, it's Lord of the Rings, and I was like, please leave me home with Grandma. I don't want to go. And they were like, no, we're going as a family. And I was like, but why Why take me to see a movie that you know I don't want to go see? I was so against it from the moment it came out that when we went to the movies, I, like, cried the whole time. And my mom and I still are, <laughs> whenever we bring it up, it's like a total argument that she's like, you were being a little bitch that day. And I was like, well, you shouldn't have taken me to the movie that I said that I was going to act up during. Yeah. You're, I made right. it very clear that I would not sit still during this movie before we left the house. I was like, I really you're, listen, to, like, this. You listen I, to this. Listen to this story. Go. This is like, wild. So maybe, maybe in retrospect, I was too old for this behavior. 
On honestly, on more the parents' side, to be honest. This is. I've seen fights like this happen, where parents are just like insisting on doing something as a family, as a family, when in this case, thirty-three percent of the family doesn't have any interest in it. That's not as a family. You're you're forcing this now. Do something that the person wants. If you want to have parent kid time, the activity has to be 50 50, right? That you're both enjoying. It can't be demanding that this child do something with you in the name of doing something for the family. That's just manipulation. Yeah, but like my parents were like. You want to see the movie and you're dragging the kid with you so that you can kind of make it seem like you're being a good parent while doing the thing that you wanted to do. We're going to see a movie. It's Lord of the Rings. And I was like please leave me home with grandma. I don't want to go. And they were like, no, we're going as a family. And I was like, but why, why take me to see a movie that you know I don't want to go see? I was so against it from the moment it came out that when we went to the movies, I like cried the whole time. And my mom and I still are, whenever we bring it up, it's like a total argument that she's like, you were being a little bitch that day. And I was like, well, you shouldn't have taken me to the movie that I said that I was going to act up during. Yeah. You're, I made it right. very clear that I would not sit still during this movie. No, and Alex is... <laughs> Never Alex is half. She, she was being a little... <laughs> I told you I was going to act up, and now I'm acting up. I mean, that's a little hostage-taking, but eh, I kind of get it. Before we left the house. I, was... I mean, what other leverage do you have as a kid? I was like, I really don't want to see it. I'm not going to like it. Have you ever seen it? Depending on how old she was. No. Me neither. We should watch it with your mom. Off. Just to piss her off. We should make her watch it, because you know what? She's going to say she doesn't want to. And I would love to sit down and force her into watching that movie. Mm-hmm. See how she feels. You can, you can get your ultimate karma on your mother. We could argue about this, and whichever one feels like we're right will prove the other person wrong. By the, the other, other person's experience. And it yeah. cancels it out. We should do it. That sounds super healthy. I do feel like that was fully, and I'm like, I'm sure there's like girls out there who like those movies, but like that's for boys. Yeah. Sorry. And we're not even trying to be like, <clears throat> we'll we'll call you whatever pronouns you want to be called. We 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 don't even we don't even really fit gender norms. I wear more boy clothes, I feel like, than girl clothes. <clears throat> um, but that is for boys. <laughs> that is for boys. I don't know what else to say. That is. For boys, and so is like um, it's another one. Uh, Tony, if a guy ever wanted me to watch Star Trek, we're not even on the same planet. I can't tell you how many guys have asked me, and the answer is no. But have <laughs> asked me the question: Have you ever seen Donnie Darko? Mm -hmm. They love Donnie. Darko. I don't even know what that is. I don't I, know what it is, I but it's I for boys. Have, but it is for boys. Donnie Darko is for boys. The Marvel movies, they said in the chat. The Marvel anything movies, I don't personally don't dis anything I personally dislike movies. is for They're the other so gender. They're so bad. Okay, sex I'll tell you what's good. Whichever. Both. Spider Man. It's for Spider Man. Both. Spider Man. Spider Man. The sex very, and the gender I don't identify as. Such. Oh, the Tobey Maguire one was good. Into the Spider Verse movie was. I've watched it six times on my own. It's so good. Um, and I heard the new one that just came out is good. The Marvel movie, like the the what's the one that everyone cried in recently? Avengers. Oh my God! No, recently. every no. scene, every scene, they're doing a normal thing, every, living a normal life. What's that sound? The bad guy breaks in. Strong, things break. He kills the bad guy. He goes away. They go back. She's not wrong. It is very paid by thing. numbers, Love but scene. it's supposed to be. What's it's for sound? the bad guy breaks in. It's every. It's so repetitive. It's most over and over and over again. And if you're not the most common yeah, denominator. It's not for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's boy TV. I think it's the male fantasy of like, like well, you said, the bad well, well, guy well, comes well. in. First of all, first of all, men don't speak freely here. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Yeah. Every guy wants to be that guy where like shit's going down. It's like I'll take care of this. Like like running towards the danger, and that's why it's like the bad guy comes in. It's time to because every guy's living that through themselves. You know what I mean? Like like oh, I'd be the wow. one running towards the bad guy. Like that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and then they're, but like, they're guys not are out there acting like fucking villains in the world. 
I can't. Make up your mind. If you guys all want to be superheroes that bad, then you should all be awesome, amazing men. If the For the number of people who love Marvel, if that's the reason they love it, then they yeah. should all be a little better. We're really lacking in Fantasy. superheroes. And Not really reality. overcompensating in superhero movie sales. <laughs> I've never like looked around in a movie theater at a Marvel movie and seen guys who look like they could protect me if something <laughs> goes down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that must be, yeah, G Mike, that has to be what it is. It has to, it's some part of fantasy, and then directors like the men love this, put 16 of those in, an, in three hours. 16 of them and have a girl with huge tits as a character and book and each scene with an explosion Beginning and make and sure Scarlett Johansson is the lead absolutely yeah. um I yeah I fuck with Spider-Man too no though for some reason and I'm trying to figure out why why girls are down with Spider-Man you you are not girls <laughs> You are weird. You're a strange person. He's like obviously you're not... the most fuckable of all of them, but I can't figure uh, out it's why. That's so funny that like, I think the they're just like normal girls. The rest of them are made to be good looking, but I wouldn't want to fuck That's any of them so the way I would fuck Spider-Man. That's so funny that you can realize it's the web that he's shooting literally at people. <laughs> it's the white sticky web that he's shooting everywhere. I don't That's know, but it's kind of hot. We're like, I can't figure out why this guy in like a tight outfit who saves the world and shoots white sticky stuff at you. Things upside down to make out with you. It's all great. And it's written really well. And the movies just seem different. Yeah. They yeah, it's seem... not the same shit every time. It doesn't feel like the hacky ass fucking. It feels like you're watching a rom-com and a superhero shows up. Yeah. Almost. Right? There may be uh, so yeah, many. Not the likes it too. Marvel studio, yeah. right? That's probably. There we are. Yep. It's more teen drama like The Breakfast Club. Exploratory of much of the difference. Yeah, I mean, and I get that there's, like, a massive market for, like, me but also at the same time, like, there's some shit that I see out there that I look at it and I'm, like, equally turned off because I feel like it's very marketed for, like, girls. Magic Mike. Yes. I have never seen that movie. I would never go watch Magic Mike. No. I have no interest in seeing Channing Tatum in a speedo unless he's no. in my room. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to watch that on screen. I don't want to go to the movies to get horny, by the way. Like, no, not like not like specifically. I, I would love to get horny at the movies as like a side effect, but I'm not going there for that. I would never go watch like a Fifty Shades of Grey. No, Fifty Shades of Grey is another great thing that's like very girl oriented. That I'm like, you could not like pay just me play to watch Fifty Shades that. of Grey no. like at home. Not. You don't need to I go like watch it. I like movies that are nice in the middle. I like them to have a little romance, a little action, a little drama, and then move on. Please, bring. It's like TikTok. I like the TikTok of movies. Give me all the emotions. If you're gonna fill it into an hour forty-five, give me all the emotions, and then let's move on. Name your perfect yeah. movie. What's a what's a movie that you think is was like so good from beginning to end? Inglorious Bastards is one of my favorite movies. I've never seen it, but I'll have to it's check it out. So good from beginning to end. Every scene, there's something that makes you feel something. You're either like nervous, you're on edge, you're like I love that. Excited. It's a fucking great movie. I love that. I think I would what's say I, I am legend. It was so good. It was so good. Ooh. I stand by it so strongly. That's the one with the dog, right? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen That's it. the. <laughs> Can we watch it? There? That's the thing that stands out. Sure. The one with the dog. I am. I'm like, when, are you one of those not a huge Will Smith fan? Like, I'm like okay with Will Smith, but I, I like haven't. I feel like there's a lot of people who are like, "Wow, Will Smith came out with another movie. The whole world better go see it." And he's just not one of those for me. He's had a couple that I really liked, but I'm not like crazy like, about it but like, he's good he's good pursuit of happiness but there's a couple so people great. Who, like I'll, yeah the pursuit of happiness is great i don't know i'm just like not i'm not compelled to see every movie that he's in the way that i am with like some other actors there's really not a lot of actors who i'm like that with though what's a movie that's really 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 bad but you like <clears throat> Oh my gosh, I have to think about it. I have so many. That's really? most, it's mostly what I watch. 
Okay. I like what bad things. I love the movie Good Luck Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's you, so you're, funny. You like a romantic comedy. Like, you like a cute romantic comedy. I like a... That's I think not even cute. cute. It's just fucking She's bunch down. of women. It was, like, really weirdly made, but for some reason, I liked it. <laughs> I really liked it. <clears throat> okay, that's fair. Man, I'm sure I have one of these, but I cannot think of it right now. That one with Matthew McConaughey and Kate Hudson, where they're looking for the treasure, and they're, like, in some sort of nice island and it's just i watch it purely for the the views of the water okay that's reasonable though is it do like a like a diving movie or stuff like that sometimes a good ocean movie i love an ocean movie i love to escape into an ocean movie yeah ocean movies are okay and they're they're kind of i I just don't get like there's only so much you can do i guess while shooting i've seen very few movies water for sure like Course, Every one the of them kind why. of feels the same. There's only a few things, different <laughs> ways I'm you can take to be the wrong plot about that, even, like what's yes. going to happen in the water. I've just never been drawn yeah. in. Um, but it's fun. Oh, I fun, love fun that one. every time. What is it called? 32 meters down or something where the girls With are some shark- this, And I've thought about this Shout ever Wars, since I watched this movie. I'm like, this is something I would never think wrong. about while doing it, but it could happen, is that they're, they're cave diving in the ocean and the, the thing breaks off the boat. And so the cage that they're stuck in sinks to the bottom of the ocean. And they have, like, scuba tanks. But they're at, like, the bottom of the sea. And their scuba tanks are running out. It's such a good movie. Oh, I've never seen that. It's That's not good. Up. It's not even good. Because they, they don't even have good audio. Like, they can't really talk. It's, like, mostly silent and underwater. But it does fuck you up. Well, that's the point is like, yeah, like they're the movies are always novel for like one reason or another where it's like, yeah, they they literally can't talk. Everything has to be kind of shown to you like or man, you just reminded me of something that I think is so funny. What? Um, but I'm like also mildly concerned about it, which what? is the gas digital trip to Jamaica is coming up at the end of the month. And my mom specifically when I told her I was going to Jamaica said and I quote Promise me you won't go swimming if you have your period. Why? Because of the sharks. He thinks that a shark is going to smell through my tampon <laughs> and come get me. Well, maybe, but... She thinks that... She truly thinks that, like, the odds of of me dying by shark attack are, like, way I'm up not if I have my period. And I'm not sure if that's true. true. Can we look it up, G-Mike? I think it's true, G-Mike's but, like, putting, not in a way all, that means you should go swimming. So quickly, I know he's not looking them up. He just said they can smell a drop of blood from a mile away. It's like he got that from, for sure, a Marvel movie. I got to say it. <laughs> I know a Marvel, Marvel movie quote when I see one. That's from Spy Kids. He very dramatically <laughs> wrote it, too, I have to say. In mm-hmm. the chat, he wrote, <laughs> he wrote, sharks, they can smell blood from a mile away. <laughs> sharks was in its own message by itself before the rest of the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> it said especially period blood, it says. Does it say that for real? I don't believe him. I don't believe that especially period blood smells stronger. Can you pull up the article for proof that you're looking at? I don't believe you. I don't know, man. And I, 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 I don't think... I, I made that up. Oh. But I don't think true? I'm going to have looking my at, period it's that saying, week. It's saying that sharks cannot smell blood from Miley. They are able to smell blood from far away but they don't like go crazy and attack like that's a myth like they don't just smell blood and just, holy shit and just yeah, head over to- they're not like wow i smell one drop of blood that's a mile away let me go to it real quick like it's one drop of blood like that's nothing it doesn't signify a meal yeah that's true i'm not gonna be bleeding out into the ocean you know yeah don't free bleed into the ocean i wouldn't free, free bleed in the ocean i never would kimmy i love the oceans I mean, I don't think it, you would hurt the ocean if you free blood in it. It's probably one of the no. least harmful acts you could do to the ocean. No, you're right. I just feel like it would like. It I would, feel like, like if we if we all hurt her free, psyche. If we all free blood in the ocean, where the pool yeah, she's female, would come of course, back of course, Alex. <laughs> why, does, why does that make sense in my head? There would be more dolphins. Nutrients. If, yeah. There'd Maybe. be like nutrients on the coral somehow, and it would start growing again. There's the coral reefs everywhere. I'll tell you, I went to Jamaica once and I went snorkeling nude, and I think that when you go there, you should do that. 
how am I going to go snorkeling nude with all of the rest of the employees at the back of the house there? Sneak, I can't. Sneak off. Like, tell them you need a day and go and find a nude beach and go snorkeling nude. It is like, it's like if you guys have a chill day and you have a day where you can go off by yourself, I highly recommend sneaking off. That would probably be go fun. Go in Harrington. Be very free. Find a nude beach and go snorkeling nude. It feels so good to have beach water in your puss. I hate to say it so unbeautifully. <laughs> Not could I'm just said body. That that's where this was going. <laughs> just I'm shocked, your, actually. Just to be able to swim in, in your butts, like, in the ocean. It feels great. <laughs> like taking a bath? It sounds nice, but I would just, like, never have thought that anybody would phrase it that way. Because, like, <laughs> when you're wearing... Because it's interesting because when you're wearing a bathing suit, it's, like, the one thing that you're trying to do is keep everything away from your pussy. You're, like... Because sand gets in there, like, it's yeah. been hired... Oh, ow. To to fucking break into your bathing suit. Yeah, sounds like a hitman <laughs> that someone paid to get in there. I can't feel good. So, the way this sand will get... It's like, I'm going to swim into your pussy. I'm going to give it a shot and see if I could impregnate you with fish eggs. Sea seaweed's like, I'll take it a step further. I'm going to find the flaps. I'm getting in there. <laughs> seaweed's like, I want to lick her butthole. <laughs> yeah. Um, but... Yeah, no, when you're in the ocean and you're swimming naked, you almost want it. You want, you want, you, you're like, I wish that a gust of ocean would go in me. Of a, a gust ocean of ocean wave ocean. would just kind of hit me at the right angle right now. Hilarious. Yeah, you want to get, you want to get tapped by the ocean a little. Man, I mean, it seems like it'd be good for you. It was. A little salt water in the pussy wouldn't hurt. A little salt water in the pussy never hurt nobody. <laughs> Well, shit, if that ain't true. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I don't think your mom has much to worry about. Well, I just told her that if I've, I have my period, I won't go swimming. And now, regardless of whether or not I have my period, I'm just going to have to tell her that I don't because I'm going swimming either way. And yeah. also, how funny would it be if I, like, somehow got attacked by a shark because of my period? That would That's be great. Kind of, kind of funny. And now it's, like, less likely to happen now that we did this podcast. I think the universe isn't like that. Yeah. Magical thinking, I think you folks. can sometimes say a thing, and it, they're like, oh, now it would be obvious if we did it. <laughs> now if we did it, everybody's going to think this she's a fucking we? psychic of some sort. We can't give her that. It's like we haven't done, we haven't moved to the phase of making them public psychics. Please. Just... Yet. Yet. <laughs> man yeah we're doing a podcast we're doing a podcast we keep getting <laughs> high and forgetting i forgot for a second again you forgot you thought we were for facetiming a for a hot second <laughs> do you think it's dangerous that we've been facetiming too much it's affecting our podcast i don't know but also we talk about i don't think so because nine times out of ten when we're facetiming we're talking about stuff that we would never say on the podcast and that's not, and it's not funny stuff. It's just stuff we wouldn't. It's we not can't funny say. stuff. Yeah, we talk shit with each other. We yeah. goss. We goss. We spill hot tea. Yeah, like that unfunny piece of shit from last week's episode. It was not Sharad. Yeah, and our enemy show here at Gas Digital. Our enemy. Our enemy show. <laughs> fuck your show. Except fuck your co-host. Fuck that show. Your co-host. He's really nice and cool. But fuck you. Also, we love the producer. Yeah, but fuck you. They have to be talking Alex about real ass podcast, she right? She also works there. But look at her, and I can see in her heart she feels it. I think she I might have said it like 30 seconds ago. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know. We got high again. Shit, now I'm nervous. <laughs> of course, that might be too obvious. Looks, there goes your Jamaican vacation. <laughs> no, don't say mm. it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm right. Oh man, dude! I know I'm too much about this universe. This job to get myself to Jamaica, and when we come back, we'll see. Imagine I just quit after I hung out just long enough. That'd be that'd be the the best way to quit is if you quit the day after Jamaica. It's really funny. And if stayed the whole in staff Jamaica. Quits. It's so funny if the entire staff quits the day after Jamaica. But also, they also came together and paid for another week in Jamaica. So they quit. And also we're like, we're also not flying back right now. <laughs> like we're literally yeah, we're staying. like, pack your bags. You guys aren't paid for. Yeah. You guys have to figure out what's going on with your company. 
look at look at Alex. This is from her soul. <laughs> She's living. <laughs> you're fantasizing how like we used to look Whoa. like when we were watching Boy Meets World. Dude, it'd just be so fucked up. Just, why? Then why are you smiling so much? Because <laughs> I'm excited to go to Jamaica. That my amazing, amazing bosses are bringing me on this beautiful trip. <laughs> He's under. Liz is under the table pinching her. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Man. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I want to go so many places. You know, I wanted to go to Thailand, but then it's like, you can't do drugs there. Like, you can't bring mushrooms I, to Thailand, you right? You absolutely do drugs no, in Thailand. I feel that way me? about a lot what? of the places that I want to visit. It's like... I mean, not legally, but... Especially with weed. Uh, other it's drugs Thailand. I That's where you of, go to do stuff I don't like really want to go on a vacation and not be able to smoke weed. That seems gay. You're not like, supposed to say use. You're not supposed to use gay like anymore. <laughs> Fuck. Jesus, she's like 20 years behind. Fuck. <laughs> it's actually very straight to have to not be able to go anywhere without smoking weed. It's straighter than it's it is. It's sis. There you go. You guys know what I meant, okay? It's like get up with the times. Don't make me explain myself. That's what straight white males do. Sometimes I just want to talk the way I used to talk when I was like 10, even though it was inappropriate. Whoa. 20 grams of weed in Thailand, you can face the death penalty. 20 grams? I have that on me right now. Yeah. The death penalty, dude. I can't go to Thailand. But it looks so fun in Thailand. And it's like, you could. You could go and not smoke. And you'd probably love it. Sure, but I think the move would be to do a cleanse before you leave so that you're not, like, fucking like looking for weed the whole time and feeling like that effect of quitting smoking weed the whole time. You have to quit like two months before you go to Thailand. I don't think two months. I think two weeks. You think? I think two weeks before on the third week, you'd be feeling pretty good. All right. It's, it's weed, not heroin. You need yeah, but two I mean, your app of my appetite gets affected. If I stop smoking, I won't eat for like two weeks like not a big meal like i usually eat, i know. You know i should stop smoking <laughs> mm. last time i stopped smoking i lost so much weight i actually got really sick you know that might be a good idea <laughs> what do you mean i was like nauseous not for her days. for me like, i know that's so what i'm saying i wouldn't sick. i wouldn't want to do that while i was on a vacation go on the upper diet I but can't like believe truly that. growing Go up on? we were like if I ever get weed super is thin, not a folks, hard drug it should be questions. legalized and now we're on a podcast like yeah, I had bad withdrawals last time I tried to get off the stuff. No, I could never step foot in Thailand. They don't let me hit my vape. <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ. Are we okay? You ever take a step no. back and be like, maybe it's a harder Psychological drug addiction for I mean, sort of, but I, I feel like you, it, but... it helps my anxiety so much and like makes me like feel careful. like a better person so often that it's like, why am I going to pay to go on a vacation to a place where I can't have this thing that makes my life so much better? Right. I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like Amsterdam is the answer. It's the Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Okay. Amsterdam. Amsterdam. I used to have a pet Amsterdam. <laughs> no, yeah. I've I've always wanted to go to Amsterdam um, because like all the drugs are legal there. Like you could just fucking party hard and not worry. Yeah, that sounds fun. But isn't it cold? I don't know. I only, I also it's picture Holland. Like, just like to it's tourists Europe, being so the only it's, it's people who are walking Western around Europe. fucking with saucers for eyes. Like, yeah. It's like the way to spot a tourist out there is like the highest people. It's also like the more free a country is, the colder and more un uncomfortable everything else is. It's like that's the only way they could get people there. Is they're like, you can do all the drugs you want. <laughs> and they're like, fine, we'll come. But somewhere like Thailand, it's like, no, don't do any drugs, but we can give you paradise. You have to choose. Isn't that weird? That is weird. I, what are drug policies like in Australia? I think there's a good couple <clears throat> pictures of paradise in Australia. There is. There's, I've seen some really beautiful places in Australia, but I'm scared of the animals. Thailand, it's like, like Australia, like there's fucking everything. It's like, it's like a scarier the Florida. Everything. The crocs, the snakes, the spiders, the scorpion. Koalas. Croc sounds like a racial slur. It really does. We're not going to be Doesn't able to it? say croc in a few years, I can tell. No. 
<laughs> you know, I also wanted to bring this up too, and I hate to bring up TikTok again, but when I said hamster, damn, um, there's a TikTok mm. video of this girl whose hamsters are sleeping. Uh -huh. And then yep. I saw, and then, and then she called her vet, and her vet's like, they could be hibernating. And now a bunch of people, <laughs> one, a bunch of people were saying how they also buried their pet hamsters because they thought that they were dead, but that they just found out from that TikTok that it was hibernating. And two, mm -hmm. a lot of people talk about how pet hamsters die if they get really too scared, like they easily have heart attacks and die. And so I saw another TikTok, and it was a girl just dancing and said, this is fucked up, but please tell me the story after I hear your hamster died in the comments. I'm bored. <clears throat> they were so funny dude the reasons really? that hamster died were so fucked up like things that hamsters have gone through in history <laughs> is so tragic <laughs> it is so tragic like especially after learning that half of them just get buried alive well there there's that and they die so easily like they literally fall apart like according to the comments like one girl was like mine's eyes just fell out and it was just walking around with two sockets <laughs> for like a week and then it died and then someone said to mine is like mine got too cold in my room and its feet fell off and then another one <laughs> Like they die in the most tragic way. <laughs> Another one's like, my sister ran in my room and scared me, and I screamed, and I scared my hamster, and it died. <laughs> it's like the most tragic things. They die so easily, it's almost comical. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. One my says, my mom, my mom tried to pull a tick off mine, and it ended up actually being its penis, and it killed it. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 No, 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 no. Why did it have a discolored penis? I have to assume it was discolored for you to think it's a tick. Yeah, a little white hamster with a big black dick. And they're like, that's a tick. Black. That ain't a dick. That's that a tick. Off. The hamster's like, no, I said it's a dick. It's a dick. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, I. Oh, no, I have to pay for my parking. Um, my hamster died on the morning of picture day in fourth grade. And my teacher had to pull me aside because I wouldn't, like, I was, like, crying. They wouldn't send me to go take my picture because I was crying, like, all day to the point where the teacher had to, like, take me out of the classroom and tell me about the, what, about her cat that died and, like, all of, she told me about all her dead pets in history. I swear to God, it really just made me feel worse. That's hilarious. You're like, pets die like, so often. By the end of the conversation, the teacher was sad and I pretended to feel better to try to make her feel better. Oh, uh, not this time <laughs> putting it on you. Like, now I have to just feel better good, because you good tried so hard. Her. She didn't have to deal with this shit anymore. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> Alright, well, let's end the podcast there so you can pay for parking. Um, you okay, guys, baby. thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Broad Topics. You guys can follow me on Twitter, at Kimberly Congdon, on Instagram, at Kim Congdon. Check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash queenkong1. Um, I will be in New York next week. So excited. Um, come check me out. I'll be at the stand. I'll be doing shows at the Brooklyn uh, Comedy Club. I'll be chilling with Alex. We're going to be doing some podcasts. We're going to be a guest on some podcasts. It's going to be a good time. Alex, where can people find you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at I am Alex Scar. And uh, check out Stick and Portly, Watch Rick and Morty every Monday right after Legion of Skanks. It's our, uh, me and Harrington's Rick and Morty reaction show. Uh, other than that, head to gasdigitalnetwork.com. If you catch this before the end of the year, you can use promo code TOPICS30, T-O-P-I-X-3-0 for a 30-day free trial. Um, if not, promo code TOPICS will also get you a free trial. Check out the network. You can watch all of our episodes, including Sickly Susan, um, on demand whenever you want. It's pretty fucking awesome. All right. Perfect. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.
Are we recording? Yeah. Brian, my love, thank you. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I'm mostly sure are that you certain? guys are recording. Are you certain? Oh, thank you, sir. Is it, would you say the percentage of that you're sure that we're recording is about over 100? Not over 100. At 100. They're about. <laughs> okay, I'm confident. Me too. Okay. Welcome, guys. <laughs> What's up, you guys? <laughs> 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 Welcome to another episode of Broad Talk. <laughs> Flipping and reverse it. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Broad Topics. My name's Kim Congdon. What <laughs> the fuck just happened? <laughs> I had a stroke and I tried to recover that with a Missy Elliott song. Incredible. Um, I feel like I just went back in time with you as you fucking, you literally just took time with you. Mm-hmm. Bounce over the nerf plant. <laughs> what? <laughs> Isn't that a, uh, that's not it. the plant yet. It's your ferment with the plant. Yeah. That was pretty good. It's <laughs> your ferment with the plant. Yeah. <laughs> if you got a big. <laughs> 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 Let me search it. Search it? Like you're searching a dick? <laughs> Found now out how hard I gotta, gotta work you. Yeah. It's your, your ferment with the plant. Yeah. yeah. It's your, your ferment with the plant. Yeah. yeah. Girl. Oh, you know what's so funny? And I messaged this girl after fucking... After, literally, this happened in fifth grade, and I messaged this girl on Facebook because I saw her on Facebook. I added her for, just so I could message her and told her I'd still think about it. There was this girl. Her name was Jovi. She was in my fifth grade English class. Her teacher's name was Miss Acock. She was a bitch. <coughs> fucking terrible, mean bitch. Miss Acock? Yeah, and probably stemmed from that because she probably got bullied a lot or something. Okay. And she decided to be a teacher with that name third grade teacher with Acock as her name. Anyways, uh, she gave everybody in the class an assignment. They that was so childish. To get a book <laughs> or, or a book, and in one of the pages of the book had to be a poem. And Jovi was being so lazy, and she like didn't want to do it. She's like, I'm just going to write whatever. And she submitted it, and like all, all her, like my poem was like, I love my mom. I love her. True. I love my mom. Her favorite color is blue. Like shit like <laughs> that. <you know? laughs> yeah. And all this third grade little bitch wrote, she was Boys, boys, all types of boys. Black, white, Puerto Rican, Chinese boys. <laughs> that was her fucking poem. And I remember. Thayo, 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 thayo. How racist that she did that. Thayo, 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 thayo. Oh, I wish your friend continued. That's yes. great. That's literally the next lyric. <laughs> I don't think she knew how to spell it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, she uh, <laughs> she submitted that. And I was, I remember being like, I, did I say third grade? Yeah. I meant fifth grade. Okay. So it was fifth grade. That's why we all, ACOC was a little more. Like some girls are like, I feel like you're woke enough to be like, that's inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, fifth grade was like when I was like, what? That's when w w I was like, that's weird that you turned that in. Third yeah. grade, I wouldn't have thought about it. I would have been like, so many different kinds of people in the world. <laughs> yeah. Or just, yeah. <laughs> so many lyrics. different boys. <laughs> yeah. Um, but. Yeah, sh so I messaged her. I was like, I remember when you sent that to Ms. Acock, and she just wrote back, LOL. I was like, bitch, write back, like, what? how are you? I hate that. I, I have a couple of girls from my past who I'm, like, trying to, like, I have tried a few times to connect with over the years where I'm like, we used to be really close friends. Like, I should reach out to this person, bring something up. Mm -hmm. And it's always like that. It's always like, ha, -ha. Yeah. Because they changed I have one didn't. girl like that I was really good friends with in high school. And then I saw her, and when I went up to give her a hug, she was, like, weird about hugging me. And I was like, why do people get weird after you don't see them for a like, while? Like, what's that now? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, we don't have a problem because, you know, she, we were still cool. And she likes all my stuff on Facebook and stuff. Like, she's cool with me. It's but weird. just in person, she was like, oh, hi. And she's, like, a little standoffish. And I was like, okay. But she saw her. And one girl. Something up. Mm -hmm. And it's always, within always like that. It's always like, ha-ha. Yeah. So to explain this, uh, again, my theory for a long time has been both these girls are somewhere on the autism spectrum. This is very much an autistic thing. Because this is how I think about it, too. It's nothing to, like, reach out to someone that you haven't seen in 10 years because something is like, oh. Because you just leave relationships exactly where they were when you left, and you expect them not to be any different, right? You don't really consider the intervening years. And it's <laughs> very, very funny. So they, they're both shocked by this. Also, 
Shout out Illuminati. See, I have Horus, folks. Where are my masons at? Uh, I have one girl like that. I was really slash good whatever in high conspiracy you are. And then I saw her, and when I went up to give her a hug, she was like weird about hugging me. And I was like, why do people get weird after you don't see them for a like, while? Like, what's that now? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, we don't have a problem because, you know, she, we were still cool. And she likes all my stuff on Facebook Same thing. and stuff. Like, she's cool with me. I mean, not exactly, we but those are related like, oh, uh, symbols. Like a little standoffish. The one covered eye. Yeah, no, I feel like a we lot were, of my old friends are very standoffish. What we did is <laughs> we were in the same TV productions class. And uh, it was like the things that would go out into like the school uh, and like every student had their own pods where you'd record your assignments and the teacher had lis listen back to them, see if they sounded good or your editing projects and stuff like that. And we would go into editing rooms and we would fucking record our farts and we would <laughs> add them into people's <laughs> projects. <laughs> 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 I was like, how can you not hug someone that did that that's, with you? That's a good friend. Come on. That's hilarious. That's crazy. There might be some kind of like pent up old resentment, though. Like maybe shit wasn't maybe your friendship had some kind of weird element to it that it didn't because it was addressed. casual enough that it wasn't that serious too we were like really good friends in school and every once in a while hung outside of school but mm. hung out a lot in school she was just like busy outside of school and so was i yeah mm. we were fine it's actually that. the best kind of friendship yes. i had a lot of friends in high school who like came to expect a lot from me because we'd hang out so often after school where it was like bitch we're like you know we're friends but it's like i don't owe you every day of like yeah. You know what I mean? Like that dynamic between Autism folks. friends sometimes. Like, it do be like that. Like, I don't know. I get that a lot in my life where like the people who I respect and, and stay friends with for the longest are people who I could see like now and again. And it's the same shit as if I saw them all the time. I don't yeah. I hate when somebody has. That's exactly how I am, by the way. Friendship expectation of you. Like we're not fucking dating. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. I like a low pressure friend. Low You're pressure like a good friendship. friend cuz it's like I see you when I see you. Yeah, like we I hang out too. Like we've hung out yeah. outside of it, but it's like never like oh, I haven't seen Alex. I feel guilty. Right? And I like it when like um the concept of like okay, we could make plans and if something comes up and I just can't make the plans, like I don't have to feel pressured to go anyway even though I don't really want to. Like I could be like, "Yo, Kim, I'm not like, I can flake and it's fine. We're not that close." Yeah. Listen not to this. Insane. There's no fucking pressure on it. Yeah. That's friendship. Yeah, we like each other. I I don't know. I feel like a lot of people are like, "Oh, like uh, I don't know." A lot of people are not like that. No, a lot of people put a, a lot of people are too dependent on their friend, I think. Yeah. I think you can't be dependent on a friend because it takes the fun out of a friendship. Exactly. So um, if you are, uh, are out there and you have a friend and you like get mad when they cancel plans, fucking chill out, bro. We're busy people. Everyone's busy. Even if people don't seem busy, it's like being alive is hard. Let your friend take a nap when right? you want to take a nap and cancel plans. I also feel like I lost a lot of my like middle school high school friendships by smoking by being like the pot smoker that i am where like i had a lot of friends back in like more innocent mm -hmm. times that just weren't into that then and i got so into it so quickly yeah well it's also like when we were growing up you're a little bit younger than me but you when did you start smoking how old were you i was 15. <clears throat> So, uh, yeah, I mean, still even then, like, less so, but even then, like, it wasn't an okay thing to smoke. Like, even now, people, if you go down south, like, and, and you smoke weed, some moms will look at you like you're doing meth in front of them. No, yeah, it was, like, it was kind of badass at the time. Yeah, it, it's, like, a bad, I remember yeah. being in high school, and it was, like, like, the stoners, also, like, I thought they were cool. I was, like, they're so cool that they can just smoke weed and go to school. Because, like, I was, like, I could smoke weed if I wanted to, but I couldn't be high at school. I'd freak the fuck out. Cause I, I, was, oh, I used to do it just for the freak out, almost. I just needed to change. Like, high school is so hard. Every fucking day is the same. So I liked getting there and being, like, well, now I'm high. Now I have a challenge. Like, yeah, let's get through this day. Yeah. It was, it was fun. It was, I just never took shit seriously, I think. Mm -hmm. Um were we just saying oh that yeah just like losing friends over smoking weed yeah it's like a thing well fuck them fuck them fuck them fuck them losers fucking straight edge bitches well i don't think i don't even know if i ever finished your introduction did i this is alex scarlato hey my co-host what's up guys my stoner co-host yeah that's probably how um we fail to introduce ourselves every week yeah every week nobody knows who they're even listening to they're just subscribed to this podcast they're like i don't know their names they've never said it <laughs> these bitches could talk though <laughs> <laughs> they will just keep going and going and going 
Um, so we, uh, we first of all, we should apologize. We've missed another week, and I know it's fucked up, and I know we've missed two podcasts total, and we're really, really sorry. Sincerely, not trying to make a habit out of it whatsoever. No, we already talked about it. We got to stop. What we've been—it's been crazy. We're we're getting back on our shit. Sorry, guys. And it's still crazy. We're it's getting crazy. back on our shit, but yeah. we're fucking crazy busy. Both of us right now got a lot going on. Alex has got a lot of cool shit happening. You're directing shit. You're producing shit. You're moving up at Gas Digital quick. This bitch is moving up in the ranks. She's fucking spitting at people. I spat at my first person the other day. <laughs> she had a first spat, my little baby. It was lovely. Thank you, interns. So, yeah, I'm super proud of you. You've been killing it. You helped us film Stone Science 2 in L.A. We went so to L.A. So much fun. Yeah. L.A. was crazy. Oh, L.A. was crazy. It was such a fucking crazy week. Two days of Stone Science shooting and two days of shows uh, at the Comedy Store with Legion of Skanks, mm -hmm. which was pretty bananas. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we should at least acknowledge it because everyone knows what happened. Yeah. And, you know, I've heard that I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it because I've heard the story be told over and so over again. Times, I mean, on so many podcasts. I'm so sick of hearing it. So, but it's like also like it's kind of my thing. So it's like I want to get my side out too. You For know sure. what I'm saying? Like everyone's talking about it, but I'm just gonna stay silent. But, um, but yeah. So, you guys, if you didn't hear, the head. Yeah, we feel like to. anybody who listens to our show probably heard. Yeah, there was a incident, uh, on Wednesday night last week. Two weeks ago, last week. Was it only last week? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I know. Oh, uh, <laughs> shit. That is fresh. <laughs> this is a fresh wound. It's, it's so fresh, but oh, s at the same time, so many people have been talking about it. And that it, feels it just feels like fucking old news. But, I mean, you're right. We were there. We should address it. Yeah. So <laughs> there was an incident that happened last Wednesday at the show, af at the Legion of Skank show. Um, it was... Uh, there was uh, almost a fight. It was a whole thing. Uh, if you guys don't know, uh, Kurt Metzger uh, and my boyfriend, Louis J. Gomez, have had a beef for the, like, the last seven, eight months um, for a situation that happened another time. Oh, we I forgot about this whole thing. Louis was hosting this a show years ago. And Kurt was featuring and Big J was headlining. And uh, and Kurt decided I don't know what happened. They tour together to now, I guess. Lewis, well, I guess that was a while ago too. He just decided on his own to light Lewis. This is all resolved, I promise. Because uh, he wanted to get up, and Lewis uh, did not take that well, and they ended up uh, having to get split up from security after Lewis got off stage, after Kurt got off stage, um, and you know they sent some nasty texts to each other for a few days and. And that was that, and that happened. And, you know, I'd, I'd seen Kurt uh, and his girlfriend, Annie Letterman, at the Comedy Central roast when I did the roast, and they were up there because uh, Kurt roasted. Yeah, Kurt roasted. And uh, <clears throat> and we were cool. I was cool with them. Even though him and Lewis have a beef, I was like, cool, we smoked a joint. I was like, chill with them. And first of all, I want to, well, okay, I'll get into that in a second. <laughs> so we're at the comedy store. Fast forward <laughs> to last Wednesday. Woo! Woo! Drama! Woo! So Here's where it gets interesting, everybody. Love the drama, folks. So we're at the comedy store last Wednesday. No shame about and, that. Uh, they're, uh, the Lewis and Jay and Dave are getting ready for the Legion of Skink show up in the belly room. And um, I think one of the guys tells Lewis that Kurt Metzger is coming. So Lewis already decides that he's not going to talk to him. He's like, I'm just not going to say anything. I'm mature. Right. Yeah, which is, yeah. Uh, Dave said it before, really mature for Lewis. Mm -hmm. um, it's the best possible thing he could have done. And so uh, Kurt sees Lewis at the comedy store, and the first thing he does is he tries to make a joke by saying hello by lighting him, which is just <laughs> he's fucking <laughs> nagging him, or he's just, like, fucking with him. That's pretty funny, yeah, actually. It's not even, like, it's just a shitty thing to do. The thing that made him mad, <laughs> that's the way you're going to try and be friendly again by alpha him. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's, like, shitty. So Lewis just walks right by him, doesn't say anything. Kurt loses his mind because Lewis walks by him and, like, doesn't say anything. And so he's in the parking lot. And this is, I, I, I'm not even here for this yet. I missed all that. So about three minutes later, I pull up and I see Kurt Metzger, Annie Letterman, Big J Okerson, and Dave Smith all out in the parking lot at the back of the comedy store. And I go to join them. Kurt's screaming about something and he's going, I'll kill him. I don't care. I'll fucking stab him. 
Ow, if he fucking ignores me, if he fucking ignores me again, I'll beat his ass. I'll fucking kill him. He was like saying all this crazy shit. He was gonna stab him. He was gonna murder him. Lewis is a hack. Meanwhile, this is in front of all of Lewis's fans. And, um, and. Sounds about normal for Kurt. And it was. I didn't say anything. Kurt Metzger. And boots. the whole time. Very, very I mean, funny. Little crazy. He's but very, very funny. saying he's gonna kill my boyfriend in front of me. And they know I'm there. They know I'm standing there. And the fans are there. And it's like, also, like, I, I'm feeling weird. Like, I, maybe I should say something. But I'm like, I'm going to stay out of it. It's not really my thing. Nothing has happened crazy yet. He's just being crazy. But I do go upstairs and I tell Lewis, like, Kurt's threatening to kill you. Just so you know. Like, that's where we're at uh, downstairs. So then Lewis flies out the door, which is not what I meant to do. I just wanted it, him to know what was going on. I get it. Yeah. So he you have didn't to. go I out mean, there and get his ass, like, not be, like sure blindsided I believe by that. Kurt, you know, yeah. not knowing that someone was after him. For sure. Uh, so I was like, Kurt's saying you want to, you want to. Because it would be suspicious of so he runs out of there Sparks. And Kurt's already gone. He leaves. So Len Lewis is texting Kurt, come back, you bitch, come back, you bitch. They're texting all night. They're doing the Legion of Skank show all during the first show. Lewis and Kurt are texting back and forth, um, being shitty to each other. And I guess uh, someone, I don't even know how this works, someone had the genius idea to bring him onto the podcast. Um, and he comes onto the podcast, and they start arguing. It seemed like all three, like Louis J and Dave, kind of agreed to have him on the podcast. Yes. It was like a thing it was with terrible like, idea. if we're going to do it, let's do it on the like show in a, in a place where it can't get to that level but <laughs> yeah right sure uh anyway that would have been yeah that would have been the normal way yeah anyway <laughs> um, so 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 they're into the second podcast and i don't know what's going on but lewis and kurt are going back and forth kurt's reading text messages from lewis on the stage and lewis is yelling fight me faggot <laughs> <laughs> Probably, like who knows, <laughs> and uh, and Kurt sounds about like a direct quote. Calls Lewis stupid. I remember the moment that it happened. That was the thing that. There's the him trigger. Yeah. He was like, Lewis, it's because you're stupid, and he called him stupid. And then Lewis threw a drink at Kurt, which Big J intercepted. Miss Kurt. They get separated. They go outside. Really <laughs> well, if I might say. Oh yeah, check out that clip wherever you can Incredible. find the fight. Incredible. Okay. It's incredible deflection. Really good block. <laughs> it's crazy. He should have fucking <laughs> been in the NFL. It's insane. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So then Kurt goes outside and Lewis goes after him to, you know, go get him to fight or whatever it is that they're going to do. And, you know, I go out there and this is where what pisses me off. This is where I <laughs> get fucking annoyed. I go out there. I've stayed out of it the whole time. I haven't said shit. I've Kim did a really good job of staying out of it. I did. Until. I did. I even <laughs> let him throw shit at each other on stage. I was sitting right there. I could have mm -hmm. jumped in and fucking beat up Kurt <laughs> in the belly room and been a crazy bitch. But I didn't. I just didn't. But then I go to the front of the comedy store and there's a big crowd. Everyone from the show is out there wa waiting to see what happens. So all the managers are gathered. All the security's out there now. <laughs> Every door guy's out there. It's a scene. And Kurt and Annie are, like, in the middle of the mob of people. Like, w near the comedy store managers, near the security, near all the staff. And Lewis is like, come on, Kurt, come fight. Come fight. You wanted to fight. Blah, blah, blah. Come fight. And Kurt and Annie are playing, like, coy. Like, they fucking have no idea why such a loud Puerto Rican would be so upset at them right now. That's so annoying. They're, all, yeah. they're both just professional comedians that would <laughs> never, ever start to trouble at the comedy store because they need the spots <laughs> it's like that's not real shit the real shit is that you were yelling you wanted to fight you wanted to beat him up you fucking called him stupid on his podcast go beat him up then like it was like bullshit like, I, I love like how that. petty this is i don't like that because it's happened to me before where someone said something and i'm like all right come on and then they're like why are you acting crazy it's like no i'm not acting crazy i don't just talk shit for no reason that's crazy it is fucking crazy to push another human being to that point and then be like, ooh, why are you being like that? That's fucking crazy behavior. That's a mental illness. That's like gaslighting. That's like narcissistic behavior. That's crazy. That's She's not wrong. It's crazy to it's, do. It's in the moment. He like, said he um, was going to stab and kill him. It's impossible to like deflect in the moment because when you're like, you're bringing it to this level. 
Yeah. And now there's there's nothing you could do about it because now I'm at this fucking level. And, and you I'm don't not wanna, going back down. And you don't want to match me for some reason. Like, it's it's like a fucked up move for sure. It's like I if you that. saw wild animals, if you saw, like, two fucking lions and one of them started fucking growling or whatever they did, roaring at the other one to fight. And then when the other one came to fight, the other one ran away. It's like, what's going on in the jungle? <laughs> Our safari's fucked up. We're polluting the forest too much. <laughs> I have no idea how animals work, obviously. <laughs> uh, that was a really bad example, you guys. I think it stands. I think it holds up. But you know what I mean? We'll like, it's very weird to, to hype someone up to fight you, and then when they want to fight you, pretend that you're above it. Or because to use the, because the, the managers are there. Words, like, it's like fake. Bite, they bite fucking me. belong in LA. Yeah. Well, it's fake. Yeah. And, um,. And so I go up to Kurt because he's in the middle of these people and trying to make Lewis look he's like being calm, trying to make Lewis look crazy. I know exactly what's going on. He's playing the nice guy. So in the whole situation in front of the managers, he looks good. So I think she's analyzing this Kurt. completely correctly, Me by the way. I've been very cool throughout this whole thing. I've stayed out of it. I haven't said anything to you. And he's like, yeah, I know. And I go, but back there, you just said you were going to beat his ass. You called him out to fight. You told him to come out and fight. There he is. Go fight him. And that's what I was saying. I was like, go fight him. That's what you were saying. You were saying you were going to beat his ass. You were going to kill him. You were going to go stab him. Go <laughs> stab him. <laughs> I've never seen Kim. That's like, nuts, Kim's though. Her analysis is correct, of course, but her 10. behavior like, is wild. Did you even see it? Were you there? I wasn't there. This is the second time I'm hearing it from you, but the first time you were... She comes to the right conclusions, and so then... Yeah. <laughs> Excited some to be wild hearing, nonsense. like, this more detailed version of it. Oh, yeah. You were just giving me, like... The understanding of the situation. Times, shit, we haven't even gotten. Which is going to sound incredibly endearing um, about her. But yeah. She's I've right until she behaves and then she's wrong. <laughs> as when fucking Kim's man is fighting somebody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, from that video. It's probably soaking wet, creek too. The yeah, the, the video from the creek in the cave, the audio from his fight against Ryan O'Neal. <laughs> there there are multiple watching you win a fight. now of you, you being get in like, the fight, just don't fight lose. him! <laughs> Fuck him up, babe. Yeah, I know. It's not okay. But um. So anyways, so anyways. Kim was dying for them to fight. So I was saying, go fight him. I wasn't dying for him to fight. I just wanted just Kurt not to do that. Like, yeah. I just yeah. didn't like I that it. he was being manipulated. It can't just be anybody. It has to be a low status person that, that you're fighting, right? It has to be like a justified you know fight. Now that the manager in some way. Fight. At least, like, you can look at it sideways. And then, so I'm telling Kurt, I'm like, go fight him. If they have go any ability him, goes, to make a justified up, fight, Kim. they'll tell themselves like, it's a justified fight. You can't just, like, go punch some tiny guy. That doesn't work. I suppose some girls don't work. Never a good idea. Never a fucking good idea. I just, I just slammed him. If the fight's somehow a, because uh, of them. Coaster, <laughs> a coaster, a rubber coaster the on the table four times. So, yeah, I'm not to be fucked with. Don't um, fuck with this bitch. <laughs> so, yeah, so she tells me to shut the fuck up in a very, very rude tone, which is, I like Dave's point that he said on this, too, is not what you say to someone in that environment when everyone's getting ready to fight. Those are fighting words. In any other situation, saying shut the fuck up when it's not crazy and violent, maybe not fighting words. In that situation where you're going, shut the fuck up, and people are about to fight, that's when you, that's saying you want to fight. Mm -hmm. So then I, w I just took her glasses, or I don't know. <laughs> so I got this, I got drunk Kim's explanation of this. And I cleaned them off and I put them right back on her face. <laughs> and I was like, don't you see? <laughs> Bitch, I'm not to be fucked with. And that's. <laughs> What I did. Don't you see? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I did. Uh, Quote me on that. Okay. And if you ask anybody, that's what I did. That's what happened. Yep. I took them and I put them right back on her face, not on the floor. Right back on her face. Definitely picked them off really gently. Mm hmm Kind of brushed your breath onto them. <laughs> <laughs> Polish them a little bit. <laughs> Not with a fucking t-shirt. That would have been the crazier thing to do, right? <laughs> to really clean her glasses. <laughs> but that would have been so funny, Kim. <laughs> to put them right back on her and be like, don't you see? I'm fucking crazy. <laughs> 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 if I went like this, oh, let me Kim. Kim. Next time, please. Yeah, well, it's because what I are these glued? <laughs> it's because I have to. <laughs> it's all silent and it takes way too long. Bitch, don't you see? I'm 
crazy. That would have been. Can you please keep that in the pocket? For next time, a bitch with, gl with glasses crosses you because that is fucking crazy. So basically, that's where it ended. <laughs> they, got, oh, they got in the fuck. lift, and the party was over. And, you know, they say that they're cool with me. I don't have any problem with them because, unlike what they do, I got it out. I had, I had a, a problem and I dealt with it in the moment. I had a cute moment with Lewis probably right after that was when I came out of the club. I was like cleaning up after skanks, getting some shit together. Um, and fucking, I went outside to discuss an issue with Lewis mm -hmm. and he wanted absolutely nothing to do with me. He was just like, whatever I said to him, I was like, hey, Lewis, this and that is done, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, where's my girlfriend? I love her. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, just like me bitch. and Jay and Christine standing there, and he was like, I love her. <laughs> <laughs> All violent and angry. Really angry. Uh, <laughs> it was so, I was like, aw. <laughs> Someone find Kim. <laughs> Someone get Kim. Someone go get Kim. <laughs> I was in a fucking, I looked like I was, I was in an outfit that looked like I was changing oils an hour before. <laughs> 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 Fighting Kurt Metzger. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. oh. What a nightmare. Yeah, it was, it was really quite a week. Um. Anyways, so, you know, like I said, I have no, I have no anger because I deal with my shit on site. Yeah, fuck it. In that moment. Shit should be over now. Yeah. That's great. I need to stop dealing with my life like that. I'm always like. Maybe not. <laughs> I'm always like, I'm just going to let this. Let's let's Alex let this. is going to fucking shoot up gas digital let's one day. Let's fucking let this shit boil. It'll see how it tastes later. She's going to kill us all. Ooh. Alex is gonna kill me in my sleep and be like, you thought I was a friend. <laughs> she was always funnier than me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do have an issue with, uh, like, I, I don't think I could ever just, like, step at someone. Like, in a fucking, like, I, first of all, I don't have the physical strength to back anything up. So mm -hmm. putting myself in a position to possibly get in a fight, like, you have some muscle. It's yeah. just because there's, it's just because I'm skinny that it looks like there's muscle. They're actually just little hot dog arms. It's just like the only muscle your body has. It shows. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, I don't think, like I've never hit anyone. I don't think I could do it. No. No. Hmm. And I think that I if I like, so then the fear life. steps in that like if I were to even say something that like might cause somebody Anything else to want to fight me, and you can't, can't handle it, I can't put myself Just in that position because nice there's no way I'm gonna fucking be okay. I'll fight anyone. Teach me. I don't know. I'm just fucking crazy. No, it's like it's scary. I'm not trying to get fucking. No, it is scary. I don't want to fight ever. I'm a. But like, I will fight anyone. I'm not. I'm not like that. I'm just so, I'm such a passive bitch. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably the better way to be, to be honest. I guess so. But also when it comes to like confronting Surviving. things right away. Yeah. Oh it, yeah. It extends to like non-violent situations where it's like, well, you pissed me off, but I don't even know if I'm going to deal oh. with it right now. Oh my God. I don't. I'm like, you're never, when someone pisses me off, the first thought in my head is like, they're never going to do this again. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> like, I'm going to make sure they'll never do this again. That's healthier, I think. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I, I don't, don't know. know. That's It doesn't sound healthy, but I feel like it's got to be healthier. I mean, for me, <laughs> it's not healthier for the other person. <laughs> from, we're all <laughs> fucked up. I don't know. But then the person learns, and it's like they ma get to make a decision there. Like, can I meet that standard or not? And am I going to continue being friends with this person? Or yeah, and then it either goes or it stays. Yeah, it's like decide. I feel like that's actually way healthier than being like, yeah, we'll we'll try to deal with this later. I want to still be friends with you, that's but like, d you're not, whatever, you know? Yeah. I told you I would prepare topics for today, and I had a list of one topic. <laughs> What is it? It said anal bleaching. Oh, anal bleaching. Do you get that? No, I was wondering if you did. You must. No, I never have. You have to. But like, because I thought of putting bleach there? in my ass. Absolutely necessary. Seems ladies. unnatural. Do you think it touches the inside? I mean, it's bleach on your skin, regardless. That's true. <laughs> and then like, suppositories are a thing that only work because your asshole is just like so ready to suck up whatever you put near it, right? Yeah. That's a great point. Your asshole is the vacuum to the suppository. 
that's a poem a man once wrote me. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, never mind, I guess. I just wanted to have a prettier asshole. Yeah, no, that makes sense. They aren't cute. They're not cute. And it's like, I feel like even if you're not trying to do anal, you just want to have like a presentable little butthole. Yeah, little I mean, bum. yeah. Isn't it crazy how quickly and how long asshole hairs get? Yes. They're like, my asshole hair, if I don't shave it, it'll look like what's on your head. Two and weeks, two bro. Two weeks, yeah. It'll two be weeks. like the head on your hair. Your hair on your head. It's, cur it's got like waves in yeah, it. Yeah, I know it curls at the ends. Bro. Yeah, it's what? like crazy. I don't know what the asshole's doing, but I wish it would teach my scalp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really not great. They're like, it's fucking uh, impossible to get rid of. Because mm -hmm. like... First of all, either you're going to have a woman bend down and, like, be in your butthole fucking smearing wax around. I don't care about that. Smearing hot. I, I don't like that. I don't want a woman. Have you ever gotten your butthole wax? I've gotten my pussy wax. I've never gotten my butthole wax. Getting your butthole wax feels so good. I feel like it would probably hurt like it a doesn't, fucking bitch. It literally doesn't hurt at all. You agree that bikini waxing hurts? Yes, okay. so much. It was like the worst pain in my life. I feel life. like the bone in the front. <gasps> I feel like near your asshole is more sensitive. Nope, though. that's what you'd think. You would, right? Yes, and she put it on and I was like, Ugh. and then she ripped it and I was like, oh, can I do that again? And she uses like the same hot wax. Yep. Same shit. I feel like that hot wax near your asshole would so literally send a good painful tingle from my asshole to like the center of my I remember forehead. it being ple surprisingly pleasurable not like sexually but like oh this feels warm and then when the hair came off I was like nice I and if if a woman's gonna fucking wax my asshole I want her to Think of how much your asshole goes through I want English to not be her primary language like I want her to like seem like somebody who's complete like I don't want like anyone that could just be your old neighbor <laughs> yeah exactly like it's just it's weird I don't care. I don't, I don't care about any of that stuff anymore. I don't care about my butthole, my pussy. I will show it to whoever. I'm not there yet. Wait, is it because you're shy about showing your butthole too? I just feel like... Like it feels weird to show your butthole? I feel like it just, it's an idea of like, I wouldn't want to be in some girl's butthole yeah, but getting her hairs out. Then you wouldn't have that job. I know, but I, you think any of them like it? They're yeah, like, they probably like waxing hair off bodies. They like seeing body hair on a body and then taking it off and then seeing it not have hair. I guess so. I don't know, but I don't know about bleaching. It's just like my boyfriend's already seen my asshole. And he, like now it's going to change color suddenly. He knows the color of it already. Yeah. I don't know. It just feels like um like you'd be like, "Look at my cute little butthole." Yeah, no, I would like it to be lighter, I guess. Just your like butthole's darker than the your same skin. color as everything else. My butthole's like my nipples. It's just slightly yeah. darker than my skin. Exactly. And a butthole seems like it shouldn't be dark because poop comes out of it. That's the that's the truth. That's what that's it is. That's the truth about asshole bleaching. Is nobody wants their butthole to be a little darker than their skin because it looks like poop stains. Mhm. Mm right? Exactly. And then it's like you're like, oh. It's just a bad amb ambiance. This guy going to see my butthole and just think of my poop? The natural butthole is just truly a bad ambiance. It's true. There's no feng shui. There's no feng shui. <laughs> <laughs> but some people I bet have just naturally really nice buttholes. Well, I mean, I see that. Like, you see it in porn sometimes where you're like, like, does every girl in porn fucking bleach their asshole? Probably. They know it's going to be like, out there. Like, sometimes I'm like, this girl's pussy asshole situation, perfect. Yeah. Every once in a while, I'll see a Literally porn, and I'm like, that looks like perfect. you could fucking eat off of it. Right? I'm like, <laughs> what? I was like, I would eat my meal yes. off of that before my own table. I swear to God, I turn those off because I'm, like, jealous. Yeah. Like, I turn, I'm like, this. are you fucking a Barbie doll? Yeah. With a, with a pussy? Yeah. Because they don't have pussies, I guess. Yeah. But, like, literally just, like, there's... There's no evidence of hair having ever grown there. Or There's how about girls that wear bikinis and they're like super skinny and super oh. high and it looks like they've never had a pubic hair in their life. Oh. Have you ever seen that? Yes. I'm like, bitch, do you get razor burn? I'm like, how how many times LASIK. how many times did this video did this photo go through Photoshop? Maybe No, I've seen them in real life. I would cry. I would literally p push her in the pool. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It's Here, like, bitch, get wet. How is your? It looks like she, they, they just never grew pussy hair. And I'm like, how are you? Because they wear like 
It's like a string Bitch. On their, over their pussy, just over the crack of their pussy. Dude, if I shave my bikini line in the morning before the beach, <laughs> I'm hairy in the afternoon at the beach. <laughs> Like yeah. I'm, I'm already like, oh, this. You could see all my, you know my what, I have bumps to do? and shit. Like, you know the trick is, those I let mine jeans. grow out and then shave it. That's the trick. That's how you get the real deep shave. I know, and then, it like pulls the hair while you shave. And then sometimes I'll get a wax because I'll be like, there'll be nothing under the skin. There'll be absolutely nothing at all. And then it's just like red for four days, and I'm like, oh, okay. Well, so I'm red or hairy. I look like I've got very serious <laughs> irritation, but other than that, I'm pretty sexy. <laughs> a huge rash or you think you're like so hot <laughs> it's bleeding down your leg i swear to god i feel like whenever i'm trying to be sexy there is something on me that's making me feel like that feeling that's so funny where i'm like oh yes that's how i feel too everything's all right except i've got this cold saw yes like, it's, it's always something something that i'm like i I'm looking really good. Except if my eyebrows are so bushy. If yeah. everybody could look past the fact that I forgot to shave my legs this week. Yes. Like, my mustache needs a waxing. Exactly. It's always something. It's There's always a fucking something. a lot of pressure on the beauty standards, you guys, here. It's so much. I mean, I don't do a lot to, like, try to keep up with it. But still, the Me little neither. that I do is feels like a lot. Yep. I do the bare minimum, and I'm still exhausted. Like, I don't know. I don't my know what to do. My sister spends, like, all day and night. Like taking care of her face, her skin, her nails, her eyebrows. Imagine having the time. I'd do it. I know. Me Be too. nice. I know. Fucking cornrow my hair. Yeah. Have it one style that I don't need to change. Every once in a while, I'm like, I have no time to shave my armpits. I'll just braid it. <laughs> <laughs> run out. Um. Is that a thing about cornrows that like you get them in and then for like a couple weeks you don't really need to style your hair? It's just done. Mm a thing yeah well i had them in and i kept them in for like five days when did you have oh no not cornrows i meant french braid uh -oh. so white that's way whiter never mind <laughs> so when did you have cornrows <laughs> i'd love to see I've that i've never had cornrows <laughs> just like life. straight attached to the bottom yeah <laughs> no I've never i've never done it i've wanted it before for sure when i was like younger I've had them do like uh, when you go to the Caribbean. And I they know. Do, like, uh, of course you did. Every white ones. girl, every white only child has had that. Are you crazy, bitch? That's the first thing you do when you're fucking ship docks in the <laughs> Caribbean. <laughs> go get your hair braided. Your parents have been so excited to get there, and they have to wait two extra hours after the ship docks. You have to fucking sit there and just watch some old Jamaican lady <laughs> braid my hair. Ah, uh, fuck. Fucking overcharge them. Oh my god. I remember it costing like 105 bucks. Do you know how to braid? I know how to French braid, but I know in theory how to how to do cornrows because it's like s similar to a French braid, except it would be the opposite where you're taking the hair from the inside and going out and like adding it each time. Yeah. Where the French braid, you take it from the outside and like put it in I don't toward know. the inside. I don't know. I know in theory how to do it, but I have never cornrowed a person. Corn I think road. it takes a ton of practice. Yeah, I feel you on that. Um. I guess I have a fun question for you that I thought of earlier. Mm -hmm. You have to think of it very carefully. I'm excited. If you could have one question answered and it was the truth, just one, what would it be? What happens to us after we die? Damn, I thought it was mine. Okay, besides that question. I feel like it was, that's an obvious one because yeah. it's the one well, unanswered really question. It's the one thing we though. can't figure out that's the problem. Yeah. for ourselves. You can't unlearn that. Yeah. But what if... Or, and, um, and it could be what terrible. If it's, and I want it answered because it will... If I know, it will influence how I live my life. Me too. Like, that's, the, that's like the one thing that's like worth knowing. If nothing knowing. happens, I'm going balls to the wall. Fuck shebang, yes. Shebang, diggy, 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 set the boogie, set up, chuck the boogie. Did it used to say balls to the wall? Balls to the wall, to bang, to bang, diggy, diggy. Did it say balls to the wall? I think, I don't know. That was good, though. But I would go <laughs> balls to the wall, to bang, to bang, diggy, 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 sit the boogie, sit up, chuck the boogie. Me too. You would what? Go balls to the wall, to bang, bang, to boogie. They should the bucks up the boogie. <laughs> <laughs> no, Alex. I mean, like, if no, no, no. That's what I would do. <laughs> yeah, but if you realize you'd only had one life, you'd have to go balls to the wall, to bang, to bang, diggy, 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 set the boogie, set up, chuck the boogie. What would I do? <laughs> yeah. Um. Shit. Well, uh, first of all, I don't know. I feel like the things you want to do in that scenario, you need fucking money for. 
It's like almost say it's almost the same question as like what would you do if you won the Mega Millions? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a weirdly similar question. Like what would you what would you do if you so found out? So if you out, found like, out there was nothing after death, that would be disappointing, right? It would Every be, year on your birthday you'd be like, I'm closer to nothingness. It'd be really disappointing, but I think I'd be grateful to know for sure. And I think it would take me like two, three years and I'd like learn how to accept that and figure out what I'm gonna do with the rest of my life and how to make it count. But it would be so, uh, sickening would to suck. me. It's sickening to me. Maybe the thought of nothing after. Maybe. Maybe the I thought of nothing after death makes me fucking ill. Yeah. It's totally possible. It's totally it's possible one of the that possibilities. this is it. It would just, This is it. Just fucking Maybe. Because, like, if you think of it that way, then life sucks. Yeah, kind of. Like, if, what's the point of any of it? Yeah, almost? why do we get stomach aches if we can't fucking live again? Like, I was fine why before do I, have I was one born. Why do I have one day with a headache if I only have one life? Yeah. Why would I ever have a headache even one day? I would definitely, I mean... Ah. Because nobody designed reality. I'm angry, if that's a p It's thing. not here for your enjoyment. That would definitely have is. to be the question that I'd answer. What if it, that wasn't... The, uh, what if you, it, it could answer anything but that? I feel like that's almost the case, though. You could answer almost anything but that. Yeah. Like, um... You could. You're deep as fuck, but you're right. I... I'd be like, a, I guess, a little curious about how, um, I guess I'd be curious how the Big Bang started or something like that. Ugh. I was just imagining the fact that, like, somebody's, somebody's question would be like, did Martha ever cheat on me? Like, yeah. just like something fucking petty from their own life. But any fucking question, that's a lot. Yeah. You could, like. I would want to know oh, what age I was going to die. Would you, though? Yeah. Yeah, because oh. same reason for the for you wanting to know if there's life after death, so I can know how to live accordingly. How sick would I'm you be? Forty-four. Yeah. Or if it, if it said, uh, what if it was like, uh, what if you were tw like, I'm 28 and it said 28, so I'm like, really? Sometime between now and 11 months from yeah. now. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. Any day now. Yeah. You don't never know what you're going to do. I would just be like, fuck it. Well, if you're asking what age at that point, you might as well just ask what date and time you're going to die. Because then yeah, you'd be way more prepared. Oh, but then you know the date and time. Oh. Then you're counting down like October 4th. Oh, that's a lot. And every day it's like, and then it's September. I don't think I want to like, know the answer to that question for myself. Maybe I don't want to know. I don't think I'd be I okay. Think I, take that back. I think you take it really personally because yeah. you're like, what the fuck? No matter when it is, you're like, why? Yeah, unless they're like 122. I'm like, hmm. I suppose. <laughs> Sounds good. I'll go peacefully. 16,000 grandchildren. <laughs> um, yeah, questions about the future, I guess, would be interesting. Mm. Like what, uh, what things are going to be like in a time that I won't be able to see. Time travel real. Is, like, uh, is, yeah, does time exist? Like, could you go back in time? In theory. Isn't it weird that because time doesn't exist, technically we're already dead? Because time is just like, we're sitting on a, like a, a line that's already happened and we're just on this part of it, but it already happened. Yeah, so but we've already died. We just haven't gotten to that part of the movie yet. It's like a movie that we just haven't gotten to the part of it yet. Right, but at the same time, the part of it that we're at right now mm -hmm. is like we're we're at a certain part of it and also like we we haven't died, but we also haven't been born yet. Yeah. Like you could watch them you could rewind yes. the movie. So yes. it's like So it's like there's depressing yeah, parts of it. There's depressing parts of it, but then you're like, oh well if that's the case and time doesn't exist, then and like I'm gonna be young again. Yeah. Or like I'm always young, I'm always old, I'm always every version of myself. Yeah, weird. From every moment. Weird. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. bananas. You're the VHS and life is the tape. What? Right? How? You're the VHS. Okay. Because no matter what, all of that is still inside of you. The right. young you, the old you, the end of it, it's all inside of you, but it's just playing on a film. Right. You get to see it frame by frame. Yeah. It's kind of fucked up. <gasps> That's a really good art image. Yeah. To have um, a person and their body is like a VHS or just like a, a person 
representing a VHS tape. Like with film going through them? Yeah. So, yeah. And then all the parts of their lives. If you could rewind to one moment in your life. Oh, I love this question. When like my be? favorite moment in my life. I have a or very specific time in my life that I remember being like, this is the happiest moment of my life. And it was nothing special. What it's was crazy. it? crazy. It was when I was probably, I would say 15 or 16 years old, which is a weird time to have the best time of your life. But I remember it was like the happiest day of my life. I was at the beach with my sister. She was 11. I brought her. It was summer vacation. I was with... All, it was like middle of summer. I'd spent the I had made friends with my my mom's friend's son Robert and his brother, and they were surfers. They were just like cool guys, and like they took they we went surfing all summer, all summer. Every morning, I woke up, we went to their house, we'd eat food, and I just remember like how fun it was. Like every morning, we'd get cereal, go to the head to the beach, and like it was one day where the waves were so perfect that like. It was all of us, my sister, and then we met up with like eight or nine other kids from our school, like cool ass kids that were all fun. We were all in the water and the waves were so fun that we were catching the waves, standing up surfing and then throwing the other person the surfboard so they can catch a wave. That's and it was like over and, and like, it w like we surfed and they were like perfect waves. So everyone could do it and all of us could still have fun. Like not too small, not too big, just like the best i remember oh, the water was like and and it was perfect and we were all laughing and like there was like food on the beach and some of us had like skim boards and i remember being like this is the best day of my life it was just a regular day at the beach like any other that's day but so that's cute i remember my sister was on my friend's oh. shoulders and they were like throwing her onto the surfboard it was just so fun that's so cute yeah i love that yeah it's so fun yeah best day ever i still remember it Yay. Which is weird because I grew up on the beach having those days, but that day specifically. But that was why. like a particular day. Mm -hmm. Just whatever was happening in your brain, maybe it was just like happy, just like euphoria. Like, yes. Yeah. A lot of that like was enough coming to out. notice it mm -hmm. where you're like, wow, this is like a special feeling that I have. Yes. I've had that feeling a few times, but I feel like I can't even pinpoint. Like, yeah. There's like just random. It's always those small little moments that like all of a sudden you're like, oh. Mm -hmm. This is like a special thing right now. Yeah. I had it one of those when me and Lewis went to Jamaica to Dunn's River. If you ever go to Jamaica, go to Dunn's River, you guys. It's a fucking beautiful waffle. Um, I kind I had a really like a you. I guess I was on Molly, so it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. But um, on the Fourth of July, uh, this year, at um, Big J's Fourth of July oh party. Yeah. When we were watching the fireworks from the roof. Oh yeah. There was this awesome moment where um, the you know whatever music you put on the fireworks display just goes to the music no matter what it is pretty much. Oh, uh, that's cool. So we listened to the uh, Jimi Hendrix play the Star Spangled Banner. It was like this like really deep like it was like <laughs> fucking just a crazy instrumental fucking beautiful version of the song like wow. really hardcore. And amazing, and uh, fucking Big J. The second it ended, it was, it's like you know, it's dragged the fuck out. It's long. It gets you in your fucking thoughts. Mm -hmm. You're just watching the fucking dice was there, like it was weird. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> watching the fucking fireworks. And um, the second the song was over, Big J flipped it over to the uh, the sexy Fergie singing mm -hmm. the national <laughs> anthem oh, fail hilarious. from a couple months ago, and it was just like fucking. Everybody died of laughter. <laughs> there was like no words spoken. Just the mu just the DJ music change fucking made everybody die laughing. Like she's like, <laughs> see, can you see? <laughs> it was. It was so <laughs> she did bomb that. It went from the best thing ever to like the most inappropriate, least fucking. It was the most American thing ever, and it was just a real moment for me where I was like, wow. She really <laughs> fucked that up. How American is this? What the lie. fuck? It really gave me joy. <laughs> wow. She really fucked that up. Wow. Don't go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was, that was bad. Give me a word and I'll sing a song. Hey. Hey now, you're an all-star. Get the game on. Go play. Whatever. 
whatever, whatever. <laughs> we're meant to be together. I'll be there and you'll be here. I'll give it to you. That was whenever, but right there. I'll let you yeah. have that. Um, hands. So I put my hands up to play in my song. The butterflies fly away. That's pretty good. I uh, I feel like that was that was delayed. You could do it faster than that. Okay. Um. I'm trying to think of ones that aren't like too fucking hard. Lights. You show the lights that stop me. Back to down. That's what it's true. That's the name of that song. When I'm alone. Um, go. Go, go, go! <laughs> you are... <laughs> shoes. Blue slave shoes. Thumb. She stuck her thumb in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you have it, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Plug. Plug it in, plug it <laughs> in. <laughs> 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 It just becomes all fucking like <laughs> jingles. Pet, pet go where the pets go. <laughs> <laughs> How many of those do you know? We should have a that off. Oh shit! Oh, can we just go back and forth mm -hmm. with them? Okay, I'll go. F can I go first? Yeah. You're gonna have more than me. Eight hundred five eighty two three hundred empire today. <laughs> um. You're blanking. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. This was your suggestion. <laughs> Subway. Eat fresh. That was good. Um, I'm loving it. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Turkey. What? Yeah, Moulin Rouge Turkey. That was their thing. I've never heard of them. Moulin Rouge Turkey? Yeah. Are you serious? I've never heard of them. You're an idiot. Um, we have the meats. <gasps> what is that? Arby's? Arby's. Ew, who knows the Arby's? We have the meats. Ew, that's their thing? <laughs> that's we their have the thing. Meats? We have the meats. Well. And they don't. Can I tell you they fucking <laughs> don't? Oh my god. I was like having just a... Just about the factual was, accuracy of the Arby's. It was a fucking day Jiggle. where I was just hungry like i just needed whatever you needed meat i needed and what the fuck ever like i need meat and i'm looking for a place here. that has it and I'm i was here. passing I by the fucking own basically like only arby's in new york city and i was like i was like arby's they have the meats i'll get some arby's like that's gonna fucking fill me up some fucking meaty shit like, like i'll get a arby's. burger i'll get some fucking meat. shit from yeah. there. arby's has the meat dude that was by far the worst fast food burger i've ever had in my goddamn life no Fuck Arby's. Fuck that shit. Arby's is not good. Arby's is some nasty ass shit. They do not have the meats. They are false advertising. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba, the joy of cola. Coca Cola. Yeah. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Oh. oh. Pepsi. For those who think fresh. Okay. All right. You want me to switch up my sodas, bitch? I will. No, I just. There's a. I'm running. I'm running out of them. Oh no no no! I have one. <laughs> oh fuck. What's the? You know the one where they fucking call J D Wentworth. Eight seven seven cash now. 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 Call now. Yeah, that one's good. <laughs> Um, Who writes those fucking shits? They're all catchy as they're fuck. They're really good. I, I like remember, that. It's the school ones. I remember being in a psychology class and we were talking about just like um, how memories work and how there's just stuff stored in your memory that you never, ever think of ever. But, you know, and her example was like anybody. Does anybody know the number for Empire? Carpeting and immediately literally took one second. And I was like in 100, 588, 2, 300 Empire. Empire. And I was that Did that it. fucking made me. That was one day where I was like, "That's something pretty interesting." Yeah, like, that's really cool. What the fuck else is sitting in my brain that I just I never think of? But if you ask me the question, I'd know it immediately. That's pretty fucking crazy. That is crazy. There's a there's a whole wealth of stuff just sitting up in that little Congdon brain. You know what happened that was weird? Um, and maybe I've seen it before and I just didn't remember. Um, remember when I told you I did DMT and I had that weird 
visual of nope. seeing the group of penguins, penguins they are walking man. on the left and there is a man well it looked man, like a group yeah. of penguins but you kind of weren't sure because they looked like people in coats sort of and they were waddling like penguins and the front one looked like an alien with a glow in his mouth i saw the exact video of that group of penguins like what i, I must have seen it before and my brain re-brought it out in that visual and i i mean i definitely it's not something i remember but I saw that group of penguins. Without, it just didn't have without the glow stick without guy. Without the glow stick guy in the front. But it was that group of penguins and they were walking and they were like, it was the same. How much would it freak you out if one day you were just on the street and you saw the glow stick guy? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Don't no. dare me that. That is creepy. That's probably what happened. Um, you yeah. probably saw it, and wh- where was the video? Just something online, or it like was, a like a National Geographic was, kind of fucking thing? It was like penguins falling noise. It was this group. It looked exactly like this in my mind, but like, oh, that one's creepy though. Uh, There's something spooky about seeing this and thinking it's people. Yeah. There. Yeah. I want to do DMT so bad. I haven't been doing hallucinogenic drugs since, I mean, my grandmother passed away. So I feel like you got to give yourself some time before you like jump into that shit again. Cause you might have like feel terrible. Yeah. But I accidentally just type penguins making fuck, but sorry, go ahead. That's okay. But I can't wait to do mushrooms again. I want to, I just need to like, need to take it slowly. She keeps saying she needs to take it slowly and telling me she takes more drugs. She's like, but I microdosed two weeks ago. I haven't. But I macro by accident. I haven't microdosed since I macrodosed by accident at the office a few weeks ago. It was a catastrophe. <laughs> <laughs> I was really scared. It is that video. It is this video that I showed it's you. It's spooky. Can I see it again? Yes. It just was up closer with the last time I saw it. There's something a little bit spooky. It was spooky in my, in when I was tripping. Yeah, there's something a little bit spooky about this video. The balls is going on. It is. They're walking like that, but it that's was like so if, spooky, it was Kim, because like they look like people from here yes. almost. And it was like that front one, like he smiled, and it was like a green glow stick in his mouth. Ah, and that weird. That's a pretty like creepy uh, DMT visual, right? Yeah, and the fact that you uh, saw it again, and you were like, "Well, I must have seen that exact thing before," because it was exactly that. Yeah, it was exactly that. But yeah. like zoomed in a little. Like if you took that and just zoomed it in. Well, yeah, your brain, your mind could have remembered it just like a little differently. Yeah. Or maybe it was on a big TV. You were sitting up close. You saw it as a kid. I don't know. When was this fucking? When? When was how this long created? does this exist for? Ah, when were you created, you old vid? I don't know. Imagine it was taken the night you did DMT. <gasps> no, uh, don't oh, tell me that. The video was taken. It was made that yesterday. Night? Oh fuck. No, don't tell me that. No, it was a long time ago, I think. Damn, that's pretty crazy. That is pretty crazy. Yeah. That's a that's what I like about those kinds of drugs though, because they just show you the shit that's already in there. Yep. You can't see they it. Really all bring the time. it out of you. There's some weird shit up there, everyone. <laughs> um I love seeing fucking visuals that I don't and that I can't really make sense of. Yeah, because that's a fun, that's what you want. Yeah. I've definitely, like, recalled stuff that I've seen in horror movies while I was tripping, though. Yeah, me too. That's not fun. Where nope. you're like, oh, she's bleeding from her eyes. Why did you show me yes, that, Brain? Yes, like, yes. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you close the mirror, someone's behind you. You're like, Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> it's fucked up. It is really fucked up. Um, yeah, I feel like we should cut them off. R- wrap her up? <laughs> wrap her up. Wrap her up like a big old dick? Wrap her up like a dick. Wrap her up like a penis you don't trust. We're wrapping her up. We don't trust you dicks. All right, you guys. <laughs> this is kind of a weird episode, this I was, know. This was a fun one. It was fun. We Thank you for listening, you guys. Um, we will be back next week. Promise. No excuses. No excuses. And do you want to plug anything? <laughs> uh, follow me on Twitter at Kimberly Congdon, Instagram at Kim Congdon. Follow my other podcast, Subway Creatures. Check out Stone Science, youtube.com slash stone science or on gasdigitalnetwork.com. Fuck yeah. You could follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Alex Scar. Um, follow all my shows on the Gas Digital Network, Irish by Podcast, High Society Radio, The Lisa Ann Experience, and In Godfrey We Trust. Whoa. 
And um, obviously st- check out Stone Science too. Mm. And that's it. Nice. Well, you guys, we it's, love you. It's been fun. It's been fun. It's been real, but we'll be back. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> What's up, you guys? It's me, Kim Congdon, and my co-host, Alex Scarlato. What's up, motherfuckers? And this is another episode of Broad Motherfucking Topics. Yay! yay, yay. <laughs> oh my God, you guys, we're sorry. We did it again. We fucking did it again. I'm so upset with us this time. Yeah, it was really beyond the control of whatever. Yeah. Well, yeah. When you don't find out that you're flying out of state for a week until like 20 minutes before your flight, it's hard to make plans with you. I don't know what to say. Yeah, I don't know what to say either. (laughs) I mean, all week in L.A., I was trying to find out when I was coming back. To yeah. find out, like, how I, you know, because, like, like I, how to plan the rest of your life. Yeah. yeah. And so, and I kept getting, like, a, I can't right now. I can't. I can't deal with that right In now. In a few days. Yeah. It's, like, a constant. <laughs> if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about my boyfriend, Luis J. Gomez, who is a very, very, very loving man. He's a kind soul. He's a kind soul. Uh, at the same time, he does have some tendencies to get too busy and overwhelm himself. To where I can't get an answer out of him. He's them. good at a lot of things and planning um, ahead of time. Is not one is of them. Is not one of them, yeah. It's very like, so I have 100,000 things to do and they're getting done today. Yeah, like, and then none of them. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's just. They all get like 80% done. They get done. It's just like hard to help because. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, That's a really good shirt, by the way. Why, thank you. I love that. Thank you, um, thank you. I really like that shirt. Like, I like it more than I feel like I should. You can borrow it whenever you like. Oh, Henry. my God, sis. It's yours. Oh, God. Shall I take it off? I'm not wearing <laughs> no, it. No, no. <laughs> Sweetie, no. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, we're sorry we missed another week. The good news is I'm done touring on the road for a while, and I'll be here, and I'm sticking around for a bit, and we're not going to miss any more episodes for a bit, and we love you, and we're still going to be just as funny as we've been. Goddamn right we are. We're going to be funnier. You know what's funny, Alex? What? Well, you know what's cool is on the road, um, I got to meet a lot of Skank, uh, Skanks fans and people from Gas Digital and people from that have watched Kill Tony and Getting Dug and like so, sort of these things that have collided this world. Mm-hmm. You know, these worlds have collided together. And a lot of them after the shows were saying how much they love broad topics. Yay. They were asking about you. They wish Yay. you were there with us. Uh, I want to come on tour with you guys sometimes so badly. You should. It's just like, it, if you guys do a weekend tour somewhere, I'm getting on a flight with you. Oh, yeah. I'll be there. Next one, you can come. Fuck yeah. That'll be fun. Fuck yeah. Um, they're, they, were ask, they were saying inside jokes from our podcast. People have inside jokes. Yay. Yeah, they talk about like the English accent and the shit cake and uh, your mushroom trip and your boyfriend getting caught <laughs> fucking you. Like, people knew our shit. Like, it was really cool. Um, it's funny. Whenever my family, whenever I'm with family, they're like, give us the link to your podcast. Like, we want to listen. <laughs> and I'm like, when you scroll down the list and see the episode called My Dad Saw Me Doggy Style, <laughs> I can't trust you not to click that one first so I don't think I can share this with you. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I would click that one first if I like, was. All it's my, just yeah. human curiosity. Yeah, if I was like an older cousin of mine, I'd be like, "What? Which yeah. one? Is that Alex or like?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. Ah, uh, yeah. 
So weird. Um, so, yeah. So I had a lot of fun. I was on the road, and um, you guys were super cool. Those of you that came out and fucking showed us that you're fans and you listen to the show. And also a lot of people have been giving us good reviews and um, listening to the podcast, and that's really fun to hear. So, you know, share this with a friend. Fuck yeah. Tell them that, you know, there's everybody knows someone that listens to a podcast and be like, hey, I know – that you have your own podcast list, but check this out. Just okay. throw a link at them. Check this shit out. Throw them a link in a text. That helps us out. Alex, do you have anything new going on we need to talk about? Huh. I don't know. I um, I, ha- I don't have much new going on, but that's caused me to like be in my house a lot, oh, no. which I love. <laughs> she's been doing drugs. <laughs> that's what that means. <laughs> if she's home, she's on drugs. I may or may not have been doing drugs, but I have discovered the joyous the, the joy, the beauty, the love that comes to my heart when I watch the children's show My Little Pony. My Little Pony, My, my Little Pony. Ah, uh, My Little Pony. Is that how it goes now? I used to wonder what friendship could be, Little Pony, until you all said it was magic with me. A big adventure, tons of fun, a beautiful heart, faithful and strong. Sharing kindness is an easy feat, and magic makes it all complete. Yeah, My Little Pony, do you know you're all my very best friends? I thought that maybe you were lying mm-hmm. at first about being into it, and now I know for sure that you're a molester. I've seen. <laughs> you're, you're a child molester. I've heard that theme song for eight seasons worth of that show in the last couple weeks. No, <laughs> you've gotten into My Little Pony for real, though? It's Is it a kid's show? It's a kid's show. It's Is it a cartoon? It's a cartoon. Okay, they don't yet actually <laughs> use real talking horses. Got it. It's the best thing ever. Is it? Should I watch I, an episode? I don't know why. Yeah, I feel like you should. You should watch an episode. I got. I was at Becky's last weekend, mm-hmm. and she was like, so what's new in your life? And I was like, the only thing I have to talk about on this earth is My Little Pony. So right why now. do you like it so uh, much? It's Okay, so it's about these six ponies, right? They're, what are their names? They're the main six. Okay. Right? Okay. All right, All right let's trot around this. <laughs> so, okay. Their names are Rarity, Rainbow Dash, Fluttershy, Pinkie Pie, Princess Twilight Sparkle. Pinkie Pie, this whore. <laughs> Princess Twilight Sparkle and Applejack. Okay, you can find a group of friends with those exact names in any coffee shop in Los Angeles, <laughs> to be honest. But yeah, go ahead. So, I like Pinkie Pie. She sounds like a porn you star. You would like Pinkie Pie. So Pinkie Pie, each of them represents a different element of harmony, which is like when all of the elements of harmony come together, it's great power mm-hmm. for Equestria, right? So um, they represent the elements of harmony, and each one of them has, like, different aspects of their personality Mm -hmm. that, like, bound them to their elements. Okay. Rarity is, like, all about beauty and, like, aesthetics and everything. Right. And um, so she's about, like, uh, generosity. Okay. And then there's Applejack's a super hard worker. She owns the Apple Farm with her her granny. Does she have an accent like that? Yep, she does. Okay. And and so she's the hard worker. Applejack sounds kind of dirty, too. (laughs) And then Fluttershy. She's very kind to animals, so she represents, like, kindness. Fluttershy. These are all (laughs) sexual-ass names. (laughs) Fluttershy, Applejack. Princess Pinkie Puss. What is it? What the fuck? Pinkie fu- Pie. Pinkie Pie. Princess Twilight Sparkle is all about education and, and acid. Like, learning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, who am I missing? Uh, oh, Rainbow Dash is about adventure. Like, she's a flyer. Okay. And she's trying to get onto the Wonder Bolts. They're like the amazing flyers of Equestria. Okay. <laughs> it's the best show ever. They visit places like Manhattan and Saddle Arabia. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a, ba- a bunch of bad horse puns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's all like pretty and colorful and I just love it. I can't get enough, honestly. Wait, <laughs> hold on. This is the fucking most mentally ill thing I've ever heard you say and there's been a lot. Okay, can I tell you how I found the show? Yeah, please. All right, so there's a there's a documentary called A Brony Tale. And it covers, like, this weird phenomena where all of these big-ass, manly-ass dudes... Like, I can't even think of a guy at Gas Digital to compare with how manly these fucking dudes in this documentary are. Okay. Who, like, started watching My Little Pony with their little daughters and then found themselves that, like, when their daughters were at school, they'd be like, I gotta see what happens on the next episode. No. Yeah. (laughs) No, that's really cute. It's, like, a widespread phenomena. And I thought it was just so crazy when I saw this doc that I was like, okay... 
maybe I'll check out an episode and like see what these dudes are seeing, like see what it's all about. And I, in the back of my head, I was like, "Wash you, you bitch, you're gonna get hooked." Like I know you. And sure enough, one episode in, I was like, "Like the first you're one, like, ends- I gotta know what happens to Pinkie Pie." <laughs> the first one ends with a to be continued, and oh. I was like, "Show me what's next." How long are they? They're twenty minute episodes. Okay, but there's eight seasons, over twenty episodes a season. So I really gobbled that you shit up. You got in there. I got in. Wow, you're crazy. <laughs> it's a great show. Like, I feel like I've learned about how to be, like, nicer and social. And, like, I got to check out the show. I'm show. not going to lie. <laughs> it's a really I'm good show. I'm not going to lie. At first, I thought you were a crazy bitch. But now you said there's a documentary on it. And I'm on this wave. I fucking, yeah. I, at Becky's last week when she was like, what's going on with you? And I was like, my little pony. I, <laughs> <laughs> I eventually talk to her enough about it to get her to throw on the pilot episode and we ended up lying there in her living room watching six episodes together. Oh. She loved she it. She liked it? She loved it. What? She was like, what's wrong with me? I, like, I went home and she was like, I'm still watching. No. Yeah. I'm watching it tonight. You have to check it out. It's so fucking good. If I come in next week and I'm two, three seasons down in My Little Pony, someone to call for help. This is sick shit. It's the wow. best. <laughs> yeah. Holy fuck, dude. Like, it's... Okay, it's written for kids, but I think that they very clearly, like, realized that they had an adult following early on, and they were like, let's start writing this as a saga. Because it is something where, like, the ponies in season eight are not the ponies you met in season one. <laughs> like Ponies die, there's drama, it's like fucking Grey's Anatomy of horses. Everybody grows and changes, some people sprout wings, like, some ponies sprout wings. That's another thing, they never slip they up and say puberty? people. Puberty? Um... I wouldn't say that. It's more like magic happens to them, like through experience. Like pussy hair? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if when you're getting your, your period, you're like, the magic's happening. <laughs> well, here it I'm comes. I'm bleeding now. My, me magic bush. <laughs> me, me magic bush is here. <laughs> oh, my God. That's insane, Alex. Yeah, so silly. Wow, good for you. There's people that, you know, there's like a fetish where people uh, like to uh, wear like ponytails in their assholes. Like, um, I'll show it's you a, a butt plug, yeah. but it's got a ponytail sticking out. Yeah, you want to see? That seems like some furry ass shit. And that was part of my curiosity that I was like watching it's, this documentary. And I was like, are these all perverts who are like turned on by this show? But there's really nothing to be turned on about. It's the most fucking innocent. I mean, I guess if you're a total pervert, innocent shit turns you on. But I don't know what to Google. I just put ponytail in butt. Ponytail butt plug. But I want to see it in an ass. Oh, I'm sure I'm sure it'll come up. They don't just take photos of a ponytail butt plug I mean, not in an ass. That's they do. <laughs> what? They do. That is a big plug part. Yeah. Let's see if the camera can get that. Yeah. Oh, the camera's gotten that. I mean, that would make me feel pretty. Me, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> do they make? I rain- kind of want one. Do they make rainbow hair ones? It would. <laughs> you know, would be funny though if I got one and didn't say anything to Lewis. Wore it like, like just didn't mention wore it, it with your pants on somehow, so that when you took your pants off, it was just <laughs> fucking there. <laughs> and then right when he's about to fuck me, just start shaking my tail at him, and he's like, "What's that?" I'm like, "What? That's always been there." <laughs> <laughs> what has it grown? I usually do some maintenance. Uh, I haven't trimmed any you know, while. Winter's come, so I didn't think. It was as important. This is fucked up. Look, they have red ones. I mean, I don't know how. Oh my god! What? That's the color of every pony. That's the <laughs> color of every pony in My Little Pony. <laughs> They've got a rainbow dash one, a rarity one. They've got one for Fluttershy. Hold on. Oh my Hold god. On. Oh my god. And this bitch with her fucking Fluttershy ponytail and her asshole. No, this bitch is killing it. Hold on. Oh my oh, god. No, open that good. shit up again. It's too good. <laughs> it's too She's good. She's talking to the girl. <laughs> What? <laughs> that looks so uncomfortable. I'm just gonna say it. Here, here's the options, you guys. Of your ass hairs. You yeah, can you, have. Could, you pick your favorite pony from the show, and then you could embody them in your sexual areas of your life. Oh, talk about needing a hair wash. I mean, this thing after it pulls out, it's got poop in the hairs and stuff. You got to shampoo it. I, I bet. don't think poop gets in the hairs. I bet it does. I bet you pull it out. This thing goes flopping around. It touches all the Aren't hairs. Aren't you careful when you pull? In, well, it depends. I, I don't know. I imagine people just, you, yeah, you pop it out and stick a dick in like immediately. Yeah, you just throw it wherever just it goes. Toss it. Cats licking it. Ew. <laughs> Ew. I've never, I've never fucking put anything up my butt like fucking. Me neither. I that, had yeah, like nothing non, fucking organic. 
I tried to be a I tried to be a freak the other day in the hotel, and I was like guiding Lewis's dick to my butt. And I was like, and come on, I'm not, yeah. You, and then you know he that you like, don't even really want to do it. But he stuck like, a on. finger up to the knuckle the into my butthole, and, and I was out. I was like, nope. Knuckle. Yeah, the first. Can knuckle. I tell you something about that? I have a belief. This is how it works for me. At least. You got to go deeper. This much finger in the butthole, the most unpleasant thing you could ever experience. A little more finger in the butthole. A little bit more pleasant, actually. No. Yes, and and well, I, I don't know if it applies with fingers, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I have had anal sex experiences where my boyfriend was like, clearly, tr like trying not to hurt me, like doing right. the thing where he's like, I'm not gonna put it in all the way because I don't want to hurt you, and I'm and I'm like, laying there like, go further. This hurts. If oh. you go further, it will feel better. Yeah, because it's probably a tight little space like, and then it opens into the, an abyss. I don't need the head of your dick holding my asshole open. Just put the whole thing in and do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then it's like an open space yeah, in there. It's exactly. not like a tight ring. It's not just like prying open the one part that's supposed to be tight. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I think so. Have, have I hit on something? I don't know. I'm scared. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no. And, and that's what those things are for, apparently. Like, you're supposed to, like, plug up your butt for a little while before anal sex to stretch her on out. And I've never no. gone through that process, and I feel like that would probably make the experience a lot better. But also, you have to be a whore. What is that? That's a skunk tail. I don't mean to call people whores who put stuff up their butts, but, like, I would have to feel like a whore for being like, I'm just stretching out my asshole for you, babe. I saw Give me another ten minutes, I'm still stretching. A comedian posted a really really spot on post the other day on Facebook and all she said was uh, I don't remember who it was or I'd shout her out um, all she said was if you work out with your hair down you're a whore <laughs> oh fuck I <laughs> love I that like, that is so it's true so true I mean I see girls at the I don't well, let's be real I don't go to the gym that much but when um, I would go to the gym I would always be kind of astounded by women there who look like they fucking got up and put did their hair and put makeup on and picked an outfit to go to the gym in. Yeah. I'm like, if that's helping you have a better workout, then power to you. But, like, I'm not sure that's always the scenario. I'm not going like, to lie, though. Um, feeling better. Like, I like to work out. Like, I don't like just throwing my hair up, a T-shirt and shorts on working out. Like, when my outfit does look cute, I do work out better. It's a I real thing. That a real thing because like I just feel more motivated to look even cuter in that outfit I'm wearing. That's how the hot girls keep getting hotter. <laughs> God the, damn it. Ah oh, damn it with the sticky finger bitches again. These sticky finger whores can't stop improving themselves. Yeah so ponytails. Yeah that's, <gasps> that's crazy. Ponytail. Because it looks like a ponytail. No you're not just realizing that. <laughs> no, I yes I am. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, I need a minute, Kim. Holy shit. That just made me feel like I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I swear to God, that just fucking hit Everything me. Everything in my stomach dropped because I got scared for her for a second. It looks like a ponytail. That's why they call it that. Isn't... <laughs> <laughs> Can I get that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, let's get you a little higher for sure. Wow. Yeah. A ponytail. Did you know that people, when people say break a leg, it's because they hope you get cast? No. I didn't know that. That's great. <laughs> That's a great one. Break a leg. Oh, shit. I always thought that was like a weird, um, like a theater thing. Because I know that in theater, a lot of things are opposite. Like you're not supposed to wish someone good luck in theater because it's bad luck. It's like Mac Macbeth type shit. Oh, really? Yeah. They who say good luck giveth thee bad looketh. No, because isn't there like a whole fucking <coughs> like history of people who are doing Macbeth in like real productions? Like the production goes to shit and the, the star dies the day before. No, opening. is that it's real? Like, literally, there's like 10, 15 accounts over the years of like Macbeth in particular. They call it the cursed play. That like everything gets fucked and people kill themselves before they're supposed to start playing Macbeth. The like, Scottish play, what? I believe, is what you're supposed to say. Macbeth right? is haunted? Yeah, or like a light, like lighting in the fucking theater like falls and smashes the stars. You know what? Like you know what I think that that adds up to is that like every production something fucking breaks, something falls, and then everyone's just like dumb and they're like, oh, old Macbeth syndrome. But it, like if you would have done 
fucking Broadway. Confirmation it's bias. The same shit. They probably have breaking lights and people breaking their legs and dying. I don't know if you remember a couple years ago. I think it must have been like ten years ago. They launched a Spider-Man production on Broadway. Mm. That like it was like news for like two weeks mm-hmm. as to how awful the opening week was going because no. their, they didn't have their fucking rigging systems right and spider-man was like getting stuck in the sky <laughs> at certain points and like, i would have paid to see that like that sounds like the best broadway show of all fucking time they should have a broadway show where they don't practice they never they give rehearse everyone their parts everybody and they it's go, a cold read <laughs> yes and you have and you you give everyone their parts a week before Okay. They have to by themselves. They can't meet any of the other cast. Learn their parts and the motions. Not only that, but they have to project what they think their character would be wearing. Yes. So everybody comes in and Dress. mad eclectic shit. Like yes. Somebody's really over the top Victorian, and somebody's like, "Well, this seems like a moratory Victorian appropriate." You know, like fuck and I, it. And I would call the play "Perfect Chaos." <laughs> How do we make this happen? <laughs> I don't. Know. Sounds easy. <laughs> we give a bunch of people a script and tell them to fucking meet us here one day. <laughs> and we film that shit. Oh, shit. Just someone walks in. They're like, hi, I'm Kelsey. I'm That Victoria. actually sounds like a really good web series. Like, like fucking um, take raw plays. Have it, like Just send it to people. Be like, learn this. It's a 20-minute play. Have them meet up at a spot. And just that's, when, that's the first time anyone meets. And you record the very first go through. And that's it. That's it. That's the web series. They, and they know, that, they know that much. They know that they're not allowed to stop. They have to keep going and tr- act as though it's opening night for something. We could call it Popping Cherries because it's always the first time. <laughs> it's, it's always the first show. Such a vile name for a production. Hey, come see our show, Popping Cherries. Popping Cherries. Down in Central Park. It's real good. <laughs> That's how I always felt about the vagina mo- monologue. I didn't even know what that was. I, I just know. know the title, but I didn't like it. I always pictured just a vagina talking. Me too. For, like o- opening its lips from the side and doing a monologue. Mm-hmm. Which actually sounds fantastic. That's what it should have been. That's what it should have been. I don't been. know what it was, but that's what it should have <laughs> been. That's definitely what <laughs> I think it was a woman talking about her struggle with living as a, a person with a vagina. Oh, so that's what it was. Yeah. A vagina talking. This is basically. Just out of the wrong lip. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's so uh, accurate. Oh, man. Me and Lewis almost got into a fight at the airport, not with each other, with someone. Oh, well, that's a good surprise. Yesterday. That's a <laughs> lovely surprise, not with each other. You want to hear what happened? I do. It got pretty bad. So me and Lewis are sitting separately on the plane. He has row five. I'm in row seven. Mm-hmm. Something. I'm like a couple seats back on the other side. And when I first get on the plane, <clears throat> the, all the cargo spaces are taken up. So I have to go like three or four like rows way, behind yeah. me and put my thing in, which I already know is going to be annoying. It's fine. Once. It's just a bitch when you're getting off the plane. Exactly. Later, yeah. Exactly. So so we land. I watch Lewis. He grabs his stuff and he like goes off to wait for me on the, on the outside of the plane. And I'm kind of waiting. I'm in row six, like I said. And I'm letting like I let row six go. I even let row seven go because mine wasn't until nine. I let row eight go. I let row nine go. And then I was like, hey, can you guys just stop a second? I want to grab my stuff. I don't want to wait for the whole plane to get off because it goes to like 34. Mm -hmm. And the reason I got tickets at the front (laughs) was so I don't have to wait 40 extra minutes when the plane stops. And so and and everybody was fine with it. And as I grab my I'm reaching for my stuff. This guy's helping me take it down. I'm like, thank you so much. I hear a voice in the seat next to me. There's like a man. And then there's someone else on the end seat by the window sitting down, not even up, ready to leave. Just, just sitting fucking lounging, just lounging. And it goes, well, you should have put your stuff closer to your seat. The voice. And then I uh, said, I would have done that if it was an option. Yeah, obviously, that was a fucking option. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I said that. I said I would have done that if it was obviously not if it was an option. Obviously, and she go. And then the girl goes, Well, you should have gotten a different ticket. And I, <laughs> and what? I'm grabbing my stuff. And do I'm you walking. own the airline and have some kind of capabilities that we don't have? Yeah. Like, what the fuck's happening? And then I grabbed my bag and I was like, Whatever, bitch. And that's what I said. Oh, I love you. And I was favorite. like, Whatever, bitch. And I grabbed my shit and I uh, and I started walking. She goes, Your mama's a bitch. And I was like, and Puerto I, Rican came out. Uh, uh, no, I didn't say that. No, she I know. Said I'm that. asking whether after no, that. No, when Rican she said your out. mom's a bitch, I was like, that's the lamest thing you could ever say back. You so fucking hack. I literally said nothing. I laughed. I was like, okay, because it's like that's like you have nothing to say. <coughs> so I was like, okay, whatever. I grab my bag. I walk away. But because I grabbed it and I was like, so like you know, have my shit everywhere. 
<clears throat> once I get off the plane, I like put my backpack down so I can tighten my straps and like get my shit together. And Lewis is standing with me, and I'm telling him, I was like, some bitch just fucking pissed me off. And now I was telling him what happened. And as I'm telling him, she starts walking out. She's this chick with this dog. She's this little. Which, she's what, like, is she some white bitch? She's a black chick. Okay. She's a black chick with a dog. <clears throat> and you can tell she's like also like a hood bitch. She's not like, you know what I'm she saying? She got that hood money. She got. She's got. She's got hood something. She was in coach with the rest of us. So. Okay. And she walks by, and as she walks by with her dog. I'm glaring at her because I'm pissed. She's glaring at me and she goes, yeah, bitch, buy a new ticket next time. Like that. And I was like, mind your fucking business. And she turned around because it's like, don't say anything. Yeah, Just like go. You fucking said, I, I let it go the last thing that you yes. said. Like, you had the last word You don't word get already. two last words you, from yeah, me. Fuck you, that. People barely get one last word I from me. I was really impressed that you said you just let her have the last word and walked away. I thought that was when you were going to fucking blow. No, I left. I walked away. And then so she turns around. She starts screaming in my face that I, sh that I, I, I was in row nine. You come from row six to get your stuff instead Here of waiting. Like voice. yelling crazy shit that nobody does nobody waits till the whole fucking plane gets off i don't know what to tell you that's crazy and then she and then so lewis is like yo why the fuck are you talking to my chick like that and he kind of pushes me back and gets in between us because this girl's like getting pretty aggressive she wants a fist fight instantly in the, her, in the airport yeah that's, that's her first reaction it. is to get a felony because that's the kind of garbage she is and uh and she started and Lewis is like, why the fuck are you talking to my chick like that? And she and and when Lewis started yelling at her, she spit in his face. No. Yeah, she was like, oh, she was fuck. like, I'm so excited for the rest of the story. Like, and like fucking like, oh, how like, did this start with we almost got in a fight? And she spit in his face, and it was like, how quickly Lewis spit right back at her. <laughs> it was like, like he had a loogie just he, waiting yeah, for her. She was like. <laughs> it was like that, like crazy. Quick. He spit her own spit back at yeah, her. Yeah, so she, he spit back at her, but Lewis's luck. Nobody was there when she spit in his face, but then the rest of the people on the airplane come back as he's going <sighs> in her face. And she's like, you spit at me. She knows. She knows what the scene is. She's like, you spit on me. And then she starts yelling, I'm calling TMZ. I'm calling TMZ. And I'm like, oh, is this bitch a fan of comedy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, but then she's Doesn't talking she about herself. She's talking about herself. Oh. I'm like, what? Who says that? Nobody that TMZ knows says I'm calling TMZ on myself. What are you going to say? Yeah. And I was like, call TMZ. You're an animal. <laughs> I was like, uh, and then the and at this point, the stewardess. I was so sure you were going to say I'm calling TSA. No, she said TMZ. <laughs> I was so confused by everything this girl did. Everything she yelled at me didn't make any sense, basically. And then, <clears throat> so, and then, so at this point, the people that check in the other flight, because we're, this argument is happening not on the plane, not in the main room, but in that hallway yeah, in between. As you step off the plane, there's like a ramp. A long yeah. hallway, yes. In that hallway, it's happening. So the people that are checking in the other plane tickets come out. And they're standing in between us because now it's just a bunch of yelling. Now I'm yelling. Lewis is yelling. She's yelling about TMZ. Who has spit on them? Did he hit her with it? They both do. Okay. At this point, they both have spit on them. It's disgusting. Yes. It's pretty Vile. gross. This yeah. is a serious like, fucking yeah. altercation right here. And, and so the ticket people get in between us. And she's still screaming about, I'm calling TMZ, I'm calling TMZ. So then she takes out her phone and she reaches through, like the people are blocking us and she reaches through their arms and starts filming us like this in our face. And she's yelling, I'm calling TMZ. And Lewis is yelling back at her. And in that moment, I just snatch her phone because she can't get through. So I'm like, this idiot just has her phone and like people blocking her. Mm -hmm. So she's holding her phone like this. There's people. There's like people. Yes. Yeah. And so I just take it and snap it down this way so she can't hold it. And I fucking rip it out of her hand and I just chucked it against this metal bench as hard as I could. Yeah. It sounded like it broke. I was hoping it did. But now, but afterwards, I was glad I didn't because yeah. you could probably actually get arrested get for it. breaking someone's <laughs> stuff. But like, I threw it to where she was like, You threw my phone! <laughs> and at this point, she's screaming. Sorry, I spit. She's screaming so loud <laughs> that her hair is like. She had short hair and it was like down in a bob at first, but it's like, it looked like we fist fought already. <laughs> like her hair is like up in the ends and she's been screaming so loud. I'm like pretty calm. And Lewis is pretty, for Lewis, for getting spit on, he's pretty calm. Okay. He's just I believe like, you. he's just like, don't get in my fucking girl. He's being a normal boyfriend. Yeah. Nothing crazy. Uh, and, uh, and she is yelling so hard. She's out of breath. 
And then so we try to walk away and she starts panicking because they're holding her back because she's too crazy and they're not holding me and Lewis back and especially they're not holding Lewis back because it's all like a bunch of women Mm -hmm. and like this beta ass dude and and they're like sir you need to stay here we need a where they're having the police come talk to everyone and Lewis looks at the lady checking and she goes excuse me ma'am are you detaining me and she was like well no you just need to talk and he goes no I'm good on the talk we're good deal with that animal Mm -hmm. and then we leave (laughs) and they're like you see them like (laughs) <laughs> like say mm-hmm. some shit and me and Lewis it's like a movie now like, now we're going, the the fuck air- out of the we're going to the airport we're up the escalator we see eight people that work at the airport with earpieces that look like the fucking FBI coming from different parts of the airport there's a police <laughs> van that all of a sudden I hear the sirens coming out me and Lewis are like let's split up I took my jacket <laughs> off <laughs> and took because we're like we don't even want to deal with this this bitch just spit in my face because I wanted my bag like or, you know what I'm saying <laughs> It'll spin Lewis's face because we wanted our bag. Was this on the way back or on the way? When we just got this to was... New York after a week-long trip. Yeah. We're so excited to be home. We're, we had a great flight. We were in a great mood. Like, it was everything was good. The people next to me were so nice on the flight. And they're probably like, what the fuck's going yeah. on? Because I was, like, peaceful in between them, like, sharing things the whole time. Yeah. And now I'm in a fight <laughs> on the ramp. Um, but then, uh, so we, like, split up. And then we hop in a cab. But, like, the whole time, they're looking for us. I'm, like, hiding. Like, someone, like, like there would be a guy. Like, he'd be, like, Shh. And he'd be looking around. And he, I would see him start to turn. Did and you, I would, like, turn directly, the hat on? No, and I would, like, directly stand behind someone. <laughs> and then he'd turn again. And I'd walk around him. It was, like, some spy mission Puerto Rican shit. I like the idea of you and Lewis just pulling shit out of your luggage and putting sunglasses and hats on and switching coats with each other and <laughs> yeah. shit. Like, yeah, it was some crazy shit. And I'll Lewis see you on took the his hat off. Yeah. I put his hat on. Yeah. It was a whole thing. And um, and then we got in a cab and went home and left the whole way home. Yeah, that sounds hilarious. We were like, what the we were fuck like, was that? We got the last word. The last thing I did was throw this bitch's phone and walk away. That's the best. Like, I just took it and I chucked it and I was like, whatever. And then we kept walking. And the idea that people left behind, like, left behind with her had been on the flight with all, like, with everyone. Like, the flight is long enough that people know whose side to take, kind yeah. of. Where they're like, I don't know, like, how she acted on the flight, but I'm sure she wasn't, like, totally sweet to the person next to no, her I'm who sure. is now holding her back from, like, a fucking, yeah. you know? The guy next to her came up to me before, like, even, like, after I was like, shut it, bitch, and she was like, your mom. He was kind of behind me on the ramp, and he was like, hey, just ignore her. She's people like that are. Yeah. And he kept walking. Exactly. So it's like, like, I know she was a bad person. It wasn't me. Like, yeah. she would just wanted to start trouble. She was annoyed. She wanted to get off the plane, but it's like, fucking wait fucking wait bitch because I'm getting off because I had a seat before you and that's how life works can I tell you guys Cam and Lewis do not split up for shit I mean you guys are attached to the hip when you're out together like Mm -hmm. it's so funny to me that you looked each other in the eye and you're like here, you take this bag. I'll take this bag. Give me your hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, and then, but we we didn't really split up. We were on the, phone. on the phone. You're like, yeah. I was like, all right, I'm gonna go find a cab. I'm gonna go downstairs. You take this escalator. And he's like, cool. And I would see him. It was kind of <laughs> fun. It was kind of fun. I'm not gonna lie. That sounds like so much. It fun. brought us closer together, being such trash. How great is that? Yeah. Oh, spitting, throwing a bitch's phone. Sometimes you gotta throw a hoe phone. Fucking adventure. So that's what happened. <laughs> uh, I don't really know what else to say. Am I like so wrong? And you know, you know what's fucked up is like when I first met Lewis, he told me he's like, yeah, like there's a lot of like shit I've gone into. He's like, but it kind of seems like it just it gets attracted to me. And I feel like he's rubbed a little bit of that off of me. Yeah. And I think that that's actually not a cop out. I think it's true. Yeah. Lewis has a certain bit of chaos within him, uh-huh. I think, and that it does gets attract chaos. chaos. Yeah, like, there's, I mean, there's there's never been a time, and God bless Lewis's heart, there's never been an appointment he's ever made where, like, the people just write down the right date or, like, the right mm-hmm. time or, like, the right name. Everything he does where he, if, even if he tries to do it right, if we get in a cab, the cab driver's blind and deaf, <laughs> and, like, he just drives us into the river when we have to be at a party. It's just... It is his luck. He just has it, and like I don't know how to change it. I've he tried works to around help. it really well. He like makes it. He's it. It's funny. It seems to me like he's accepted it, and he's like managed to work around it. He's if you know work, what I mean. I, it's getting better because he's working on it. Like he knows. That I tell him he has to stop being so chaotic because it's bringing into his life, mm-hmm. and so it's he's attracting that energy. He and to I, react better mm-hmm. now. So yeah. that's the first step. Totally. Like just like, when the chaos is happening to like react better totally i feel like he's good at that now yeah and like um what was i gonna say like uh 
I just had a brain fart. What was I saying? Lewis, progress. Oh, he brings a chaos Caught, with him. Yeah. Yeah, I've chaos, just seen it. I've just missing seen appointments it. <clears throat> and stuff like that. People he, fucking up on him. Yeah, like I've just seen so many times where I've been like, let's. Oh, and you know what a thing is, too? I think he's so much in a hurry that a lot of the times he's in a rush and he's not speaking clearly. And a lot of the people that we deal with that he has to deal with on a daily basis are not first language English speakers. So like cab drivers, people that are making our food. Things that, like, you're standing in line and waiting on someone else. And he's frustrated, so he's like, I want to get that. And then people's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's, like, a miscommunication. <laughs> like, we had a guy that was Spanish who was taking us to the airport. Uh-huh. And we get in, and he said, and Lewis is like, wait, uh, what? And, he's, and he's, he's kind of freaking out because he can't find what airline it is. Okay. Because we're pulling up and now he's pulling it up in his email and not like screen. Like I screenshot it in the morning. Mm -hmm. So it's in my last picture. I always pull it up. I check in like that. Like it's very, very. I'm ready. Yeah. I know what the I know what the process is. Yeah. You're like pre set. Yes. To go through. So <laughs> as he's pulling up, he's trying to pull up the thing. So he's like, oh, it's JetBlue. And, and, the, and the guy's like, well, he's like, JetBlue, you know. And so the guy we're driving. And it's taking a really long time. And I go, sir, are you taking us to JetBlue? And he goes, no, Japanese. No. The Japanese airline. Right. And Lewis is like, why would you take us to the Japanese airline? And yeah. I'm like, because you were screaming and mumbling. And he got too scared to ask you again. Yeah. I know exactly what happens. People will get too scared to confirm because you're too much in a hurry. So they're just like, I'll just go and hope I'm right. And they're yeah. never right because people are idiots naturally. Mm -hmm. And that's exact. And I could just break down. You every and Lewis do not look like you're going to the Japanese <laughs> on a Japanese yes, flight right now. People are idiots, you, and he's right are about you serious? that. We have one bag each. But like. what he has to learn is you have to help idiots. Yeah. To help yourself. Yeah. And that's something that I don't think he's gotten yet. You have to help people in order to make your life easier. You can't expect, even though in in his head he's going, I'm paying for the service. It should be easy, but it's just not the way it goes. Nothing's, it's just not the way the world is. Like it no. should be easy. But. Right. Yeah. Like when you have three to eight minutes to get a spare on a podcast, like, and Starbucks says like your thing will be ready in three to eight minutes. I never think it's good. I always go, okay, 10 minutes, it'll be ready. I always assume more than that. But he's like, we have three to eight minutes. Then we have 30 seconds to get on this train. <laughs> and I'm like, then he's going to be in Starbucks being like, where's my yeah. coffee, my train. <laughs> but it's like, why did you do that with so little time yeah. to spare? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it. But he's also a genius. I know. It's crazy. He's like the smartest person I've ever met. Well, he's so business like oriented and like he's such a hustler and he makes his money and he like does his shit. And that's but that's actually part of that happens because of the mentality that he's in that what, what you were just talking about. Like, yeah, he'll have a full fucking day booked for Monday where he really doesn't have time to spare, but he'll think of something else that he wants to do that day and fucking schedule it in. And then that's how. He's, he's getting shit done. The way he doesn't get shit done is how he gets shit yeah, done. it's crazy. He's going in my play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving him a script. Yeah, he's a genius. I love him. Yeah, I love him too. He's the best. It's crazy to see people when people have like um, his faults help him mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah, well, I mean, that's an interesting thing. I'm not sure I know how to phrase it right now, but like I'm, I'm kind of high about it. But your faults are what make you who you are and totally. they are the part of your personality that you need to focus on and cultivate to become your strengths because yeah. like the things that are holding you back are usually things that are special about you yeah it's like where can i use that thing that's special about me to in put my me life ahead? totally yeah it's kind of like when people talk about um making your job your passion exactly it's like you got to find even if you're I've always I've always used this example for some weird reason. Like if you're sitting in your house right now and you're listening to this and like you work a corporate job. But like every night you get home from your nine to six and you go down to your basement and you have like seashells and you take glue and you put them on your face. That's and a that's weird like, example. I know you bitch. that's why I wanted to use it because it's so weird and you fucking and that's your thing. Pull out a camera and put that shit on YouTube and make a job. Say Do your it, seashell yeah. face. Do fucking start selling seashell. I see where you're going with like, it. Like, if the real weird things about you are the things that people are going to be like, whoa, what's going on inside of that person? I want to get to know them. I want to, yeah. I if agree. you did ASMR videos of you gluing all the seashells on your face and then taking a wooden stick and just the sound of your face that rippling. That's like a great ASMR. Who wouldn't watch that? Yeah. Shell face ASMR. 
there is, you got a million views, now you can quit your job and that's your shit. Like, the weird things about you, you can make into a business. There's mm -hmm. a girl I know who, um, she's obsessed with lip art. What she started doing is she just started... Oh, that sounds so fucking cool. It is so cool. I wish I could remember her so fucking she's like, name. She's like, fuck lipstick. That's like painting one thing on your wall. I'm going to give you a mural. She No, it's not. It's like, it's like, it's like she'll make her lips different things. So one day she'll make them look like marble counters. Like she'll do a marble design. The next day it'll be like the top one's a strawberry and the bottom one's dripping chocolate. And she takes pictures and it looks like real fucking beautiful art. That's like, amazing. Or she'll do things like where it's yeah. just studded, like sharp spikes. And then like the caption will be like, give me a kiss. And it's like fucking cool. Yeah. And That's she quit her job great. and now she gets like makeup sponsors. She gets 60 foundations and boxes at a time. And I'm like, sure she might even have opportunities to do that for sh photo shoots for like That's what she like does. That. She does yeah. Halloween makeup. She Now she charges to teach people how to do it. She does classes. Boom. It's a whole thing. And like sh that was her weird thing she was into and she figured it out. So like what I'm saying is if you like sticking fucking ponytails in your ass. Get a webcam. Yes. <laughs> get a webcam. You don't have to show your face. <laughs> MyFreeCams.com. My free cams, my free cams. Here we are showing my pussy on cam. My free cams, my free cam. Take a look at my little ponytail <laughs> inside my asshole. <laughs> oh, 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 my little asshole. <laughs> you know what I hate is the new Cottonelle commercials. Have you heard them? I try to stay away from cable, so I don't really see commercials Let me see if that I can much. find one on here. They are fucking perverted. So it's very like... Is it, it, is it the kids' ones where they're like, this is how I wipe my ass? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Basically, Cottonelle is like talking to an adult, and they're like trying to describe... With the way their ass feels, they're like, we're going to move over to someone who understands the feeling better. <laughs> and it like cuts to these little kids. I'm here for Cottonelle today to tell you a little <laughs> bit about my butthole. My butthole is usually very soft, but sometimes after yes, I poop, it feels a little rash. <laughs> <laughs> who is listening to this? Asked, how clean do you feel after going to the bathroom? <laughs> These are adults. They're then reacting. We asked they the were experts. embarrassed. I feel as clean as a little white tiny kit. Ooh. A, uh, ooh, a twinkling iceberg. That's because only cotton oh. is clean ripple textures. Oh. It's going to clean Wait, better. I think there's another. That's bad. Clean as a shimmering mermaid. Cottonelle wants everyone to feel as clean as a shimmering mermaid. What? I'll tell you, after I use Cottonelle, my asshole is just glistening. Is that what people want to hear? I mean, the first kid described his asshole as white. It's I feel like a white sparkling marble. That is what? crazy. Is that not like pedo-like? Yeah. Why are we having, sh and when they ask the adults, it's like, how do you feel after you're wiped? They're all like, ugh, ugh, embarrassed. Because it's embarrassing and it's an adult situation. What the fuck is happening? I feel like a soft sputtering hamster down there. I feel spread open like Pinkie Pony. Honestly, it just feels so open and calm down there. Anything could get in. <laughs> I feel open. <laughs> How do you feel about using Cottonelle? Lubed. <laughs> what? Honestly, Cottonelle just makes me feel just a little looser down there. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a fucked up commercial? I mean, if it's selling Cottonelle... <laughs> All the pedophiles are getting Cottonelle to treat their victims right. Oh, listen, this, uh, this is a different one. This is a different one. With new Cottonelle, how clean do you feel after going to the bathroom? Embarrassed Let's adults. ask the experts. As clean as a silky white marble. What? Oh, why is she saying in that tone? Silky white I would almost accept it better if she was like, I feel as clean as a silky white marble. Like, like silky white marble. Ugh. Who's training them? Some, one you. of the comments from Swan Creed says, like the devil whispering in Jesus' ear. <laughs> Can I, these are, um, I mean, imagine they just let the kids answer for themselves. They, every single person came out with the most like sexually descriptive with like a, an adjective that implies softness and like stuff and, you like while you're on drugs. And like, a marble. Like, ex, ex, like, like, like explaining a child's asshole as a smooth, silky, white, clean, sparkling marble yeah i mean pedophiles are recording this and just knocking them out yeah 
they're putting that audio over their kitty porn <laughs> videos and just making and compilations. They're, they're doing the kid's mouth yeah. while it's crying. It's actually saying, I feel like <laughs> they're sparkling marbles. Literally just jerking off into a handful of cottonelle. They're saying that in this commercial, the little black girl is because there's a black girl and she doesn't get to say that her asshole feels like a white marble. That's and they're saying that she looks sad. So you want to rewatch it with me? Yeah, hold on. Feel after going to the bathroom. Let's ask the experts. As clean as a silky white marble. That's because only oh, cotton has new wavy clean happy. ripple texture. Okay, it is kind of racist to describe something clean as white. Yeah, especially you have the kid sitting right next to a black kid who doesn't get to say anything. <laughs> she got no lines and she's looks like she's physically in pain. He has three kids. We gave two of them cotton L. Guess which one didn't have it? <laughs> <laughs> two of them are clean. One of them's dirty. They're, two of them are described as white, clean, smoothie, silky marbles. Guess which kid didn't use cotton L? We just felt bad giving our cotton. <laughs> oh, I love inappropriate commercials. Um, do you remember A-hole or B-hole commercial? No. What was it for? It was Hardee's, and this is the commercial. Today we're out finding out what type of holes people prefer. Donut Donuts holes. Or Hardy's new biscuit holes. B-hole. Yeah, B-hole has it over the A-hole for sure. Why? What do you like about it? The A-hole seems kind of small. It's great. I just don't like the A-holes. B-holes are tasty and flavorful. The A-hole is nasty. B-hole tastes funny. I guess I'm just kind of a B-hole kind of guy. Introducing biscuit holes with icing. I'm not against that commercial at all. That's great, right? That's really clever. Yeah, I loved it. That got taken down. That's fucking ballsy. I think that shit should stay up. I mean, you could put it on certain channels at least. Here we are with Alex and Kim. Hardy's B holes and... Magic Bush and Pony Tales, TMZ, and all the things that we talked about today. Yeah. Ralph and Jay did a um, fucking rap off in front I of I saw that. It was good. In DMC. No, it was in front of them? Yeah. Oh, God. He judged it. Oh, who won? Well, um, so Ralph, technically right? Jay won. Okay. But Ralph had like a, like a bitch ass rap. Like it was just like, my name is Ralph and I'm here mm-hmm. to say. And then he wrote, like, a really mean one for Jay that he kept in the back pocket, right? right. And he thought it was going to play to his favor to do his shitty rap and then let Jay come back with an awesome one and then pull the mean one out of the back pocket. But he ended up getting judged off the first one. Oh, so shit. So Jay technically won, but... Ralph won. Ralph went to Bonfire a couple days ago where they decided that... Um, Every single person there was like, Ralph's rap was better. So now oh, shit. they're going to have to fucking throw down again. Oh, no. Yeah. Is DMC coming again? I don't think so. I think this is just personal. Oh, now. hilarious. <laughs> they're just both going to become rappers. I remember at one point, Sarah Weinshank, you know, Sarah, yeah. you guys know Sarah Weinshank. She has a podcast called Shank. Check her out. You guys She's should awesome. listen. She's the best. She's really fun. She does a fashion and comedy podcast, which is so her. I love that. Um, it's Sarah so fun. has the best fucking, like the most unique her sense of style she really does she's nailed herself down as being like i know what i like to wear it's Mm -hmm. amazing yeah it's really cute um and uh one time like two years ago she just decided she wanted to start rapping but it was so bad see i would have thought that she might actually have a chance i thought so too because she was so excited about it and you're like this little fucking jew this like cute little jew is gonna start rapping and she's like clever she's got good jokes i trust her to to try it i but i'm pretty sure i have a video on my instagram of her rapping like an audio because like we showed up at a show one time and this bitch just crashed a rap battle she just showed up to a rap battle and she was like I'm up next. Like she pulled some like fucking never rapped before in her life. She just got like this fucking <laughs> I don't know, like a rapper. I don't know how you would even describe it, but like sh- But to, but what fucking confidence to just go into a fucking rap <laughs> battle in downtown LA and be like, Sup. Yeah, no. Shank in the house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and the way she uh, confidently went up in her skirt and bow tie, I was fucking shocked. In her little fucking Sailor Moon fashion choices, like, yeah. And it she, was she looks like a like hip Japanese girl fashion is the way I would describe her. But listen to her podcast because she knows way better about it than I do. <laughs> the way she went up on this contest, you thought she knew how to rap. It was shocking. It was shocking that she just didn't. 
I mean, I've seen, yeah, I've seen Sarah's confidence in those areas. It's very impressive. <laughs> it really is. She's like, she's like, well, let's do it. I'm here. Oh, fuck, Put dude. me up there. I really want to find this audio. It's a whole, oh, here it is. Oh, thank God. I'm so happy right now. Hold on. You got to click on. the audio. Yeah. Got to get it back to the top. She yelled, suck it. In the saddle, but you don't. Because I come up in here from the valley. Like my name is Sally. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> but they, they bought it. Suck it! Is that loud? Suck it. Is that just you clapping for her? Yeah, that's just me. Correct. Look at her. Oh, this fucking big black dude is just standing there trying to be polite about it. <laughs> Look at her. Her little plaid skirt. She was fucking lit that night, Sally from the Valley. And anytime you'd make her rap, she would just be like, I'm, so, yeah, I'm coming in hot because I take the spot. I'm going to the zoo and I like to poo. I'm coming in a tail and I like to hail because it rains every day and I might not spray. And she would be like, mm, and like look at you like she fucking just fucking spit in your eye. Like it was fucking, <laughs> it was some crazy like shit. Like just the, the sheer ability to rhyme made her good. I but love I respect it. it. I fucking respect the fuck out of that girl. Yo, listen she to She called Shank. herself Sally from the Valley for weeks. Sarah Rhymeshank. If Sarah is not using a, a fucking personally recorded rap by herself as the opening to her podcast, she is making a dumb mistake. And also, I don't know why we haven't recorded a song together that opens our show every week. Oh, wow. Because that, that's something we should do. We should do like a song that's like, like about uh, us. What do the people do? Could we do a ballad about each other? We are the world, but it's like our own. <laughs> we, we are, are the, the podcast. <laughs> we are the girls that talk about her father seeing her. <laughs> it's just a bunch of inside jokes. <laughs> oh my God. We'll get on that this we week. We could do a video <laughs> with our arms like this and we're just slowly. Can we get everybody at Gas Digital? With oh lighters? my God, with their lighters? Yeah. Oh, wow. Did we just think of something fucking amazing or what? I don't know. We gotta test it out. We gotta, we gotta see this. Can we? Can, let's write a song about about our show and personally record it with our voices. It has to have all the inside jokes. We, we know our voices are beautiful. We know our voices are fine. We sing like angels. We do. Oh man, Sally from the Valley can drop in, do a line or two. Yo, you know what? Fucking Sarah Weinshank has inspired me through that. <laughs> I think I'm about to write my own fucking track. Yeah. I'm about to spit We're about some. to bust some flows. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bust a flow right here. I'm bust a nut, then a flow. It's like uh, good for when you're having your period. I busted my flow. I busted a Whoa. flow. Whoa. Yeah. That's a good line in the yeah. rap. <laughs> I busted, busted a flow. Busted flow. I busted my flow because this is that time of the month. No, nothing rhymes with month. I fuck. I put myself in a corner. This happens once a month. I'm busting the flow. Equal just period. once a month, just once a month, I bust my flow. Ladies, Come. you know how it goes. Say I'm PMSing because I'm busting a flow. I like it. That's the line. Kim, we need to get to writing. Say I'm PMSing. <laughs> I'm PMSing. Do you think I'm not going to write this rhyme tonight while watching my, my Little Pony? You're fucking insane. Oh, I love you. My Little Pony, my Little Pony. Do you remember the girl that used to dress as a clown? Say I'm PMSing because I'm busting my flow. I'm watching My Little Pony because it's my favorite show. Oh! What? Suck it! Suck it! <laughs> We're gonna borrow that from Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah, you, Sarah. I'm, I'm inspired. Oh shit! You were gonna say something. I just, I had to, I had to get that out. I uh, know that was worth anything. Okay. That way better than anything I was gonna say. I was gonna say, do you remember the fucking crazy bitch, the TV show, the kids show, where she would like be a clock? She was like a rag doll. Her name was Molly. Molly, yes. Big no, the doll couch? was Molly. Chair, chair in the big comfy couch. The doll was Molly. I knew there was a Molly. It's called the the big, big comfy couch. The, wait, the big the big comfy the, couch. Was it the bear in the big comfy couch? No, that was the bear in the big blue house. Oh. So long, farewell to you, my friend. Goodbye for now. Until we meet again. That was out of the box with the black dude, and then he would come in with the drums like this. So long. 
fit. She would do it by herself. So I need you to come okay. in with the drums. Okay. So, so show well, me the beat. Well, we'll do it at the end of the show. We'll, okay. do, we'll go out with that song. Do you want to hear how it goes? Well, no, no. I think we should do it cold, like our <laughs> like our play. It's cold. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll, we'll do it. All like I gotta do is come in with the drums. I can, I'll be there for you, um, Kim. I can fucking do this. What was the other show you said with the rag doll? I want to hear that theme song. I thought that was it. No, no, no. That was Bear in the Big Blue House. Was the one you oh, just said the, the name? The big comfy couch. Big comfy couch. Yeah. Big comfy couch theme song. Oh, I need to hear this. Don't let crack skin tell you what to wear. Oh. <laughs> I was so sure that was going to be the song. Bruce says clocking. Couch. Oh, that's it. Something disturbing about it. Like, yeah, this bitch is lazy. She never leaves her couch. But even just the music. I don't know anything about music, but that sounds like downbeat, like a, like a demonic kind of tune. It's like kids that are like in a hotel and like, are you ready? Are you ready? Take a look, Mr. Johnson, cause your wife's body. <laughs> what? <laughs> Have, didn't you, you know that Mr. Rogers Neighborhood is a Mandela effect? Yeah, it's a wonderful day in this Did we do that on this podcast? I think we did. Oh, it's man. It's crazy, though. It's very upsetting. If you didn't hear it, you're going to hear it again. Or it's a beautiful day in the, in this neighborhood. It's not the neighborhood anymore. It's this neighborhood. It's not, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's it's a beautiful day in this, this neighborhood. It doesn't so even clear. sound right. It's so clearly Listen this. how weird it sounds, people. This one makes me happy. Mm -hmm. This is a happy tune. It's going to fuck you up, guys. When they when it when it gets there. <laughs> oh, here we are. It's building. <laughs> This is this is this is the instrumental version. Kim, I'm wow. sure of it. <laughs> no, here it comes. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? The S is so strong. Right? Mine? I think this is again. Here again. It's a neighborly day in this neighborly day for a It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. It's, what? He hits the S harder than you would. Yes! I don't get it! And the one that really fucks me up, I hate to bring up the Mandela effect, the fucking, um... Bitch, you love it. The fucking, uh, the fucking, uh... It's on the tip of a tongue! Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. Yeah. Life was, was like, like a, a box, box of chocolates. chocolates. When? Why? <laughs> that doesn't even make sense! Why would you say life was like a box of chocolates if you never know what you're going to get now? Why? Brian, does that make sense to you? Why? Why? Life was like a box of chocolates, not life is like a box of chocolates. Why would that make sense? Why That's would you ever say was? Get on the microphone, Dad. Brian, I'm damn it! An answer. We're waiting. It's because it, it, it was. It's because Mama always said life was like a box of chocolates. At the time she, she said it. Say it. But she Mama always, to. Mama always said you wouldn't quote what, what she yeah. said in past tense. You yeah, would just quote, you would what, quote she said. what she used to say. She's using the whole. So uh, when he, when he was a child, Brian's like ah, he's retarded. Brian, when he was a child, he was, she was saying to him, "Life was like a box of chocolates." When Mom I was younger, Mom always used to say, "Life was like a box of chocolates." If she was saying it currently, he's, she would say, "Is." He's not quoting her. He's paraphrasing her. Is that what you're saying? I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm the wrong person to ask about this. Get out of here. Go home. <laughs> Get out of here. You've disobeyed us and not agreed like we wanted you to. Brian's supposed to always be on our side. <laughs> Um, dissonant voices. So I think we should wrap up. For sure. You guys, thank you for listening to another episode of Broad Topics. Um, we're going to let you go out with a little bang. First, we want to say that uh, 
uh, subscribe, rate, review. Follow us everywhere. Give us a good review. Fuck yeah. Uh, watch us on YouTube, Broad Topics PIX. You can find our YouTube channel. Every single one of our episodes is there. And you could also catch the video version. If you're used to downloading on iTunes, you might not be aware we have the video version of our show available. Mm-hmm. And Alex, where can people find you? You could find me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Alex Scar. And be sure to check out all the shows that I produce for Gas Digital Network, like In God Free We Trust, the um, High Society Radio, and Irish Goodbye Podcast. Very cool. You guys can follow me on Twitter at Kimberly Congdon, Instagram at Kim Congdon. Check out my other podcast, uh, Subway Creatures. That's on iTunes, Google Play, Google Stitch, whatever the fuck. Wherever you can find podcasts, YouTube, Gas Digital Network. Um, and also check out Stone Science. Really excited for season two to come out in the new year. Um, YouTube.com slash Stone Science. Also available on Gas Digital Network. And um, we're going to leave you with this. <clears throat> so long, farewell to you, my friends. Goodbye for now until we meet again. <laughs> so long, farewell. Goodbye for now until we meet again. <laughs>